Welcome back to Collider Live, the best damn show on the YouTubes. I'm Roxy Stryer, and I am whatever I say I am. Oh, if I were it, oh, why would I say I oh, am? God, here we go. I'm uh, the best rapper alive. Dial on, dial on, dial on, and dial on. The most evil of all time, Dorina across from me. Come with son. Happy Tuesday. What did I I'm tell you over. about the waving dude? Oh, I can't wave properly. Why are you criticizing my <laughs> no, wave? I don't already. criticize no, your joker you, laugh. It's not that. I told you stop doing it because everybody put it all over the internet last night and it looked like you were giving the air a hand job. And like it this? does right now. Like that? Just like that. Okay. Mm, and I, I shouldn't do it. I know you're hungover because you're way cooler than the rest of us because uh, we definitely were not at that Pretty Star much. Wars after party. Mark yeah. Riley in the house. Hi, everybody. Happy Star Wars Day. You Ooh. so happy. I'm, I Vicky am Ingrin. so happy. You so happy today. I'm so excited. But I spent the entire night texting with Ken Napsok, getting back to the love of Star Wars. We avoided everything online, and, and Ken and I just texted all night our favorite Star Wars memories. That's what you did? Yes. You texted your favorite Star Wars. We memory? talked about our favorite moments in the movies. Yeah. What a bunch like, of cute like nerds. nerds. Like John Roca nerds. in the house. Wow. Oh. That, that was an Eminem reaction right there. You were just like, uh huh. Well, just she always takes it hard. out on Mark when mm -hmm. she listens to Eminem. Yeah, she that's does. true. Well, I just don't really know what you mean. Like, why did you guys spend all night awake texting back and forth Star Wars? Well, uh, now you just filled in some Star blanks. Wars nerds. We we <laughs> didn't spend all night awake. We spent maybe about an hour. I think texting back and forth around the 10 o'clock hour. Like you said, Rogue and I love the lightsaber <laughs> scene where blank, ha and then he said like, well, I love the moment where they go to blank and then. It was a little deeper than that. Okay. It was, yeah, it was kind of, I don't know. It was what, was, what was deep? What, tell us a deep one. <laughs> Themes and talking about The Last Jedi and Force Awaken, how Pull it, it up. leads to here. And Pull it up. Yeah. How why much don't do you, you regret re that you brought this up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why I'm don't just you, watching. Why I don't you read regret text? everything. Cody Hall Come in the house. On. I regret yeah, everything. Uh, Cody, do you think that Mark won't pull it up because he's making the whole thing up or because he's embarrassed? Ooh. Aww. All right. I'm oh, not, boy, no, I think he, he actually did it, but I'm, I'm thinking it wasn't for as long as he said. I think it was a couple text messages. Okay. Well, there was also some personal stuff that I don't want to oh, read. Oh, let's read those. Yeah, I know, mm. right? Do it. Uh, stayed <laughs> completely away. Good morning. Alex's see. first contribution here's, to the show. Here's a good morning, and he sent me a Star Wars image. Okay. And then uh, he so, might not want his tweets well, being publicly. Yeah. It's not a tweet. Yeah, or text rather publicly. Yeah, that's true. Like when Ray sees Luke's X-wing and realizes knows how to float that thing out because Yoda showed him, and he refuses. It's so fucking fun and deep. I agree, dude. It touched me in a way that I didn't understand. Wow. It was okay, like, I believe deep, you. I'm sorry. Nerd, 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 <laughs> yeah. nerd. Yeah. Mark, Aww. way to prove yourself, man. I won't take my Eminem status out on you anymore. You know who Look I will? At that. Thank you. It will all go towards Alex Marzonia. Alex didn't even respond again. again. Hey, yo, what's up? Sonia. Don't forget the Enya. Yo, this song is so good. I, the more I listen, John, I know that you don't agree with me. He is the best living rapper. Uh, what? He, he is the best living rapper. What? God damn it. He's what do you good. mean the best one? Living rapper. He's in the conversation. He is the best living the best. rapper. He's the best you, living rapper. Why don't you rapper. play some of his other stuff? Yeah. Okay, he's, he has like had, shaking he's had the some butt in my face. That crappy one. There it is. There's a lot of this crappy ones. This is my favorite ones. of his songs. That's what I was listening to. Uh, there Early Eminem is the best Eminem. There, yes, of course, obviously. Cleaning out my closet is one of the best. Obviously, the Eminem show Don't is... you be exasperated with me. Good point. Oh, it's already starting. Don't you get exasperated no, you with me. Did. Here's the thing. That's fair. John has not done anything yet this morning. That's <laughs> yet. fair. Don't fair catch point. me nerding out on ready. text with Ken. Yeah, are you guys sitting next fair to each point. other at the cat screening? I'm so excited about cats. We are. I'm very happy for you about cats, but I'm very excited about cats. We might do more than just sit next to each other. We've talked about... Whoa. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Sweetheart, I love you. I love my girlfriend. I didn't mean that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I really missed it. No, we might uh, eat some sandwiches beforehand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We might, uh, yeah. Wait, we are we all going some, to the same one? We might have some candy. Yeah, okay, we're, we we're all going to the same Oh, I'm not going to yeah, sit yeah. next to you guys. No. <laughs> Why? What happened? No, no, I will. <laughs> Wait, are, you, are we talking about the cat screening or yeah, the Star yeah, yeah. Wars screening? Both. Oh. Yo. Because they're across the street from each other. Be be honest. Yeah. Which are you more excited? Because So I guess all four of cats. us are going. No, no. All four of us are going to Star Wars, and then three of us are going to Cats. Yeah. You're not going to Cats. Riley's right? being cats. a little bitch about it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm being a little bitch about it. I got to do some more uh, wedding planning tonight. So I would actually really, I would I would actually rather go to Cats. <laughs> I don't know. Then go. I don't know. I, I after, after last night, 
I would I would rather <laughs> go to cats. <laughs> you poor thing. Than you... deal with what. It... Riley comes in this morning to me and was like, I had to "Look at this. Can, yeah. can you read this?" I was like, "Yes, I can." I I thought he was testing me and my ability to read, so I felt I was like, "Yes, I can read that, Riley." Okay. And he was like, "No, no." Because you listen to Eminem. He, I guess. Well, you went last night with your amazing fiance, <laughs> Thank you. who yes. I'm obsessed with. Yes. Uh, yeah, we did uh, some wedding <laughs> wedding labels. We were in the FedEx Kinkos thing for about an hour when we didn't need to be Oof. because I could do it all on my own computer. Yeah. But she wanted to get it done. She right. wanted to get it done so we could get them out this morning. We had to wait though because it was a template that we had to build and it took a while and I told her and I knew it would but she was like no you're wrong we're gonna do it here <laughs> and I said okay but we're, we're, we're literally paying money for the internet where we can just do it at home and so it was it was a thing I'm, I'm, I'm isn't it exciting to plan weddings isn't it so fun it's yes not and no it's Darina. not at all no I've done it it's you not know at all. it's fine no, it's it's, it's the really little things where but you're almost done you're I almost feel so there. bad for you guys being in love and shit oh, <laughs> this must be so hard oh Roxy Here this isn't go. about love yeah. okay <laughs> 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 this, is, yeah. this is zero to but, do with but love but Roxy <laughs> be happy for yourself that you I, I get it that it's nice to have a, that partner but be happy for yourself that you don't have to deal with that because you're just in your house by yourself you don't have I to don't deal with I'm... anybody's bullshit it's just you you don't have to compromise I'm that's great. nice that's nice I'm so cool you have the ray hair going Same. which I'm so proud of you Thank Rox you. It, it's so great I, 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 I'm it, pretty it impressed you did great. it yourself guys I'm feeling so good about myself now screw Eminem Fuck I don't Eminem. need him I just not need me not the best rapper <laughs> thank you rapper. you know who I saw is invited to Mark Riley's wedding who Brett Sheridan. Oh shit! That's yeah. what it said. Yeah. Oh, you, it, that's the one you made me read. Yeah. Which is why I thought we were playing some kind of game. Can you read this, <laughs> dude? That's gonna be a party. Oh, right? Am I still on the list? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> He's told me the day he started started cutting. So I no, get nervous no. when people start Listen, cutting. What is that? I didn't make the Cougar's list. list. Well, I didn't make Cody list. Hall's list. I, I oh, didn't you make never let me forget list it, either. I need. I made neither of their lists either. Cody makes more sense. You didn't make Cougar's list. I did not make my list. That's surprising. Thank you. Get, I didn't Cody. make Dorina's list. It's a thing. I Nobody made my list. Read. Nobody made my list. I didn't know Dorina I, I, when you, you did, got I didn't married. know any of you guys. How dare you not invite me when yeah. I didn't no, know I you No, I specifically said, like, block Mark Riley from the entrance. <laughs> How about the fact that I know that you guys don't know this at home yet because it's on a pre-tape that you guys will be seeing either on Christmas or New Year's, depending on which one it came up on. But how about the fact that Dorina's owned a home for 10 years, huh? I know. What? Right? It is really weird. Wow. Like, I haven't gone home. I never owned anything. What a home. No, right? I haven't yeah. owned a home. Like things that we don't know about each other. She I is know. a home owner. Yeah. I do not know many homeowners. Me either. In this city. No. I know no. a ton in other cities. Especially <laughs> Mexicans. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure no, there are I'm plenty of Mexicans that own homes no, in this city. Well, there's some rich ones out there. there I was are. not one of them when I was growing up. Wait. So it's very nice to have a home. Speaking of um, stereotypes. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, no, about, no, it's a Jew thing. Don't worry. What about Morrissey um. or tacos? What? Oh, not Mexican. Jew. Okay. Jew. 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 How Jew do? How Jew do? How Jew do? How Jew do today? So somebody tweeted at me. Um, you didn't. You didn't. Yes, go ahead. You didn't. What's what that is one? that? That's from uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, go oh. Like, did we didn't. already? You didn't. Do we already uh, tell people that might be confused about our live chat today? Oh, oh I will. I will yeah. tell them that. So uh, that's even better for the story I'm about to tell because oh, I don't want people saying anything in there. So our live chat is disabled today. For those of you guys who are confused, uh, if you live on the internet, you know exactly why. There is a new Star Wars movie, so I hear that came out, uh, or at least that premiered, and people are doing tons of spoilers. Yeah. I I saw. Different people were posting images. I quickly quickly looked away. People from the premiere, which, by the way, if you're that jackass who is invited to the premiere, yeah. who then puts out spoilers, like, literally go fuck yourself. Yeah, you're, you should be invited. Time. I mean, it it's happens insane. Every time. I don't get um, it. But putting out spoilers and then Reddit threads and all that. So we don't want those. We don't want it in our chat. We don't want it to get ruined for you guys. We don't want anything to get spoiled. So we disabled our chat. Uh, and also because we knew I was going to be risky today and talk about the Jews. So oh, the there. chat is gone. Okay. Okay. Um, so somebody tweeted at story. me because you guys know I've been talking about the Harley Quinn animated series. Yeah, that which I is love, great. Which it's is good. Great. So good. So I'm so excited to ask you about this because mm. somebody tweeted at me a thread of a uh, Jewish man who is like, do not watch this show. This show is incredibly anti-Semitic. And you guys should not be watching what? it. What? And I was like, so that's what the thread like started with. And I was like, what? And then I looked further and they were like, 
uh, talking about, I don't want to give like spoilers, but talking about Penguin mm -hmm. and like different like Jewish references and all this stuff. And I was like, this feels like fishing to me, man. Mm -hmm. I, as a Jew, I love this show. I don't know what they're talking about. Yes, a lot of animated things use stereotypes because they, it's funny. And there are some Jewish yeah. stereotypes about in, in, in the show about money and about... Um, like having a larger nose, but nothing that was to me offensive. Well, that's what I mean. Is there is there there is a difference between stereotyping something and actually being directly racist? Yeah, right? like that's right. yeah. I don't know. I I I didn't pick up on anything anti-Semitic about it. Were you thinking that when you were no, watching the show? At no, all? because they make fun of everybody, everybody, including herself. Yeah, being crazy and uh, unstable and all that jazz. And so, to me, I didn't. I've never thought it was in any way racist. I think it's fantastic. It's funny. I think as it's hell. amazing. I know a lot of people have some troubles with some of the plot issues or some of the characterizations, but overall, I think it's a hell of a bold decision to make and it's R-rated unabashedly R-rated that's fucking a lot awesome. of cussing a lot of blood a lot of gore Ooh, a lot of sexual okay. uh, connotations and innuendos and overt sexual stuff so to me <laughs> there it is <laughs> yep oh really, Alex really oh Alex so that's all we're gonna sound like okay, Alex. <laughs> all of it is there so I I, I haven't seen <laughs> it I, I haven't seen so it be anti-semitic in any way shape or form uh, yeah I, the tweet, and I'm an honorary Jew the so. tweet had like Okay. <laughs> Wait. Push past Wait, are we going to... Wait, I don't know. Do you say I don't Hanukkah know if I want to set him up Hanukkah. for failure. Can you go over <laughs> that? You just hit a speed bump. Uh, we just kept moving. All right, I'll, I'll bite. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, my friend Steve Morris, we host the Cinephiles. He's like, you know, gener generation... Generation. So he's Jew. deemed he's you from an the, honorary? He's from the old country. And he said to me, like, his family is with me. He's like, you're an honorary Jew. Just the way you look at things, the way you interpret Jews things. I will say Jews are able to deem other people honorary yeah. Jews. So if yeah. a Jew deemed you Jew, then how do you do? Okay. Yeah. And I respect the Jewish mm -hmm. people speed, very much. Uh, speed and their perverted. comedy. So uh, <laughs> I, I, well felt like, I felt like this was nice definitely thing. a stretch. But then I looked oh, at it. Oh, no, we're like, doing the oh, no. power fucking sign. God damn it. Guys, Haley just woke. did that. Be so. more woke. Haley just did that, too, on Witching Hour. was really the, funny. The tweet had like 10,000 likes. I couldn't. Really? I could not wow. believe it. I was like, "Who's liking this? People who have never seen the show, fellow Jews, people who just like to be angry about things on the internet. Like, mm -hmm. who's liking this tweet? Because uh, I know the show. Mostly... The show doesn't even have ten thousand viewers. I don't think so. Like, but but that's that's society now. We live in a society. No, like mm -hmm. that's all reactions now. Even if people don't watch a show, they're like, "Oh, everybody's talking about this because it, some tweet got retweeted thousands and thousands Cody, of times." You so then that's tweet. fact. Yeah. To people. Can uh, I, it's it's so bizarre. It says like Harley and Ivy anti-Semitic or something okay, like that. Can I say this? Uh, last night, I, w we did not text about Star Wars. Uh, last night, I was hanging out with my girlfriend. We were watching the new Michelle Wolf special, the one-hour special. Mm -hmm. It is hilarious. Okay. Uh, and she talked this. Her opening thing after she gets past the otters is about what you're talking about. Right. This idea of the rush to get angry, the rush to cancel, yeah. the rush to do all this kind of stuff. And it is a hilarious take. And she talks about all of this, mm -hmm. breaks it all down, and it is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And so, like, she gets to the nuance and the complexities and the levels of this whole idea of why we're doing what we're doing, what it symbolizes. So, why I do you I think, think that I like is? Is it, is it like, guys. do you think this is just like rushed animalistic behavior in us biologically to just immediately like attack it's a others? Tribal thing. For, well, that's it's what she's talking about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tribalism. It's tribalism. Everybody part jumps. Of yeah, you're, yeah. you're you feel a part of it. I, I think you can. You can adopt it as your own yeah. issue. You can I, jump in and, and stir the pot. There are people that just want to go in there to watch the world burn. Yeah, yeah she there said was, you don't have to have a position on everything. Right. <laughs> you can just move past you it. Could just, you just like, like it or not like it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't that's have a take. to tweet about it at Let's all. look at a cat video. Because yeah. she was talking about otters and someone had tweeted, uh, Instagram had commented, like, had commented that um, otters uh, rape baby seals. And which is often, it actually in the, the, it's been documented that happens. So the baby so seal got she, like me too or whatever. Right, but is yeah. she, and then she goes on like, animals don't have consent. Right. This isn't how this whole thing works. Your labradoodle, a Labrador didn't fall in love with a poodle and then have sex and have no. Someone put those two together and made it happen. And so she's just talking. She's oh, oh, she goes on about <laughs> oh, that's this. That's really true. And she said in, na in nature, the the, the the otter and baby seal stuff, they do rape the baby seals. But the woman commented and she said, I used to love otters too, but then my husband put this out and she said, be better. No. Yes. And no, so that's not for real. The whole thing. Yeah. It's it, good voice you just did. I well, like she does that. it way better than I do. We should. But you gotta we see it. We need to create collider live bingo because if you had rape baby seals, <laughs> <laughs> that's a bingo. That's a 4K of Rise of Skywalker on your way. Unreal. Cody, that's how the bingo works. Thanksgiving bingo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, he's like, I don't even know what Sorry, you guys are talking about. Sorry, I was trying to find this tweet, guys. I responded to it on my Twitter, so yeah. uh, somebody tweeted at me. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but no, there was we're another... pulling it up, Roxy. We're going to pull it up. <laughs> oh, no, they're doing it. <laughs> they're doing it, Roxy. We're going to do it. There was another Twitter... It's happening right now. There was, happening right now. There was another Twitter debate that I got into uh, last night because I was tweeting about Rise of Skywalker, not because I've seen it, but just because when the reactions came out, I was saying I couldn't stop reading the reactions yeah. because they were so cryptic. And nobody in this room has seen it, so there are no spoilers coming ahead because none of us have seen the movie. Mm -hmm. But I just kept seeing all of these people tweeting about Rise of Skywalker. Some people were saying uh, it was a, a good and the ending was satisfying, but also not. <laughs> and like, I just couldn't tell what the general consensus was. So I was going crazy reading all of these. So I tweeted out being like, I'm going crazy. I don't understand. Do people like this movie or not? And obviously different people have different opinions. I understand that. But somebody responded and was like, I'm, uh, and this person was from Boston. And they said, I'm grinning so hard right now um, at, that this movie is failing or, right. or whatever. And I just wrote back and was like, why would something failing make you smile? Right. That's such a weird, like, don't do that, bro. I hate um, I, that And I said that, shit. and he was like, and he was like, oh, it's just because Disney, kind of the stuff that you yeah, yeah. joke about, Darina, right, right. but he was saying it seriously. Disney has pissed me off and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, there are thousands of people who worked on this movie. Right, exactly. Who have families and exactly. friends and rely on this. Mm -hmm. And, like, rooting against the movie is rooting against success for people. Yeah. That it doesn't make any sense. And he wrote back, he was like, Thank you so much for keeping me in check. I'm so sorry. You're oh, that's absolutely cool. right. Hey. And I was like, Internet. Okay. Internet at its at its best. Because sometimes we say stupid <coughs> shit. We do all, all the time. Do. We do all the time. Yeah. I am whatever I say I am. But that's what's. Uh, because if you weren't. Then why would I say I am? <coughs> exactly. Fair point. Oh. <laughs> yes. No, but <laughs> I. You got it? Isn't that Guys, cool though when it. that happens? Everyone stop talking. Okay. We found the oh, tweet. Oh, you found oh, it. Took a while. Jesus Christ. Okay. We found it, guys. All right. I can't read it because of Riley's mask. Wait, that's oh. his. It says, wait, uh, that's his moniker? No, yeah. no. So, hey, folks, I know everyone is excited about this new show with Harley Quinn and Ivy, but, well, it's only the second episode and the entire thing was incredibly anti Semitic. Yeah, if you didn't realize it, let me point out why. First of all, we found out Penguin is Jewish. Let's see. Jewish stereotypes check. Huge. Long nose. Yep. Rich and corrupt. Yep. His Jewish wife, fat and ugly, of course. And she has a Jersey accent. You know, because all Jews are from Jersey, right? Uh, <laughs> there's, there's more. There's, there's more. more? There's more. What? It's like a whole novel. His Jewish son, incredibly wimpy, has never touched a woman. Why Harley points this out, I don't really care to know. And wanted an army base with explosions and screams for a present because he needs to prove he has balls. And then this. <laughs> <laughs> what are the party favors at the Cobblepot Bar Mitzvah? Why? Bags of money, of course, because rich Jews. Her, 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 her. It's actually her, 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 her. her, her. Yeah, that's what it said. But, this you know. shit is, it's not okay. And people aren't even noticing because anti-Semitism is still such a hugely ingrained thing in our society. In fact, and then there was comments on the video. Don't forget your party favor. Thank you, Mrs. Cobblepot. Aw, such sweet girls. Especially since the party favors are bags of cash. Because Jews, am I right? This show has balls and I love it. This comment pretty much proves that making fun of Jews means you have balls. So yeah, anti-Semitism is basically something praiseworthy in a cartoon. Please spread this around. I'm Jewish and so tired of this shit. I gotta say, I gotta. I usually try to stick up for my fellow Jews, but like, I don't fucking understand what this person's Probably talking about. Probably a Marvel about. show. Mm. Can we look at his? What <laughs> is his? What is his uh, moniker there? Is it sensitive? Sensitive Jew, Jew boy. boy. Okay. I guess. Yeah, I guess he's describing himself. Pretty accurately. On brand, I guess. Uh, so what did you say, Roxy? You said... At, like, I just wrote back, because uh, somebody said to me, uh, asked me if I agreed with this. Does it change anything for me about the show? Because I've, I've repped the show so hard. I said, not at all. He's entitled to his opinion. But honestly, this is a stretch. Anti-Semitism is a massive problem in this country still. But this show is not the problem. Anti-Semitism is, without a doubt, one of the largest problems that this country is facing. And by mm -hmm. one of, I mean we're facing a ton of them. It is one of... A ton of discrimination. A ton of discrimination. And, and anti-Semitism right. uh, seems to be making quite the comeback. Thanks so much, friends. Uh, but it, it's... It's a huge issue. Yeah. We need to focus on the parts that are issues, not on, like, okay. So they're making fun of the Jews for loving money and having big noses, big whoop. Right. Jews are getting killed. Like, we, we, have, right, exactly. we have Nazis coming back. I mean, I, I know that people are saying this is how it starts, but it's a show that makes fun of literally every every race, every sex, every g sexual orientation, gender, uh, religion. Like, the show pokes fun at everybody. 
why I I don't know. I think pick your battles, man. This is a weird one to pick. But mm. it's also weird, and, and that's we've talked about this on the show before, right? Where it's it's still art, right? Like if it's it's movies, television. They're there for entertainment. They're there for uh, catharsis into like our own lives and inner doctors and all that BS. But there's actual really horrible things happening where there's people that are you know trying to hurt other humans because of what they look like or who they are mm -hmm. that's completely different than making a show where you're just being creative and you're just pointing oh this is like a show about villains does that make sense like that's mm -hmm. what i don't understand yeah there's a huge difference there yeah i don't i i just was surprised i was surprised i hadn't thought about it mm. one time watching this okay. i really hadn't so well it isn't like and, and let me break this down they didn't add the long nose to Penguin. Penguin already had the long uh, yeah. nose. Yeah, right. Yeah. They did make Penguin rich. Penguin's always been rich. They said that they made him Jewish, which he is not typically. He, he is right. That's fair, but all those characteristics are already in Penguin. Mm -hmm. So putting the Jewish moniker on, you didn't do anything extra to make Penguin be Jewish. Right. You just said he was Jewish. Great. Uh, also, like, but but also, isn't like or, like. What's her name? Uh, Captain Marvel? No, not Captain Marvel. Uh, crap. I'm blanking Brie Larson? on him. No. The cartoon. The cartoon. Uh, uh, is it Marvel cartoon? Is it Captain Marvel? Harley Quinn? Poison what do you, Ivy? What do you no, the one that's Muslim. Oh, oh, oh Miss Marvel. Um, uh, Miss Marvel. Marvel. Right. Oh, that's, was like, not that's Captain. Marvel. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, like, Kamala just because Khan. they make somebody. Kamala Khan. Thank right. you. I was like, Kamala Harris? That's not her. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yes, that's someone else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's 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 something that's like, just because you, you put a religion on a character, right, right, right. does that mean you're going to immediately be like, oh, that's a, you're stereotyping that character? Right. I don't understand. Stereotypes are stereotypes. I, I also, I, when I saw this, I was like, I want to see who the writers are, if any of them are Jewish. Because very likely, if you're in Hollywood, somebody in that room probably is Jewish. Mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't tell, but it, I think stereotypes, a lot of times are stereotypes for a reason. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that people stereotype that Jews love money. Jews do love money. You try having ev absolutely everything stripped from you. And the only thing that you think could possibly be the thing that makes you more powerful enough to not be in a situation like you previously were mm. is to have money. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Jews do love money. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody loves money. Uh, yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody yeah. loves love money. But, yeah. I, like, any time... But that's the Hollywood stereotype, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get I, I get it, but I think that, it, like, Jew, always, always Jews have this... I, at least I do, and I know my family does. It's always in the back of our minds what could happen. And I think anybody who's ever experienced any kind of prejudice, it's in the back of the mind what could happen for their people mm -hmm. or, or anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> that just took a really serious turn about this, but, like... I think it's a stereotype for a reason. Jews mm -hmm. specific, they do especially love money. Yeah, so, I mean, so so the point is that you should watch the Harley Quinn. Animated yeah, totally, show. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally. Right? I want to watch it now. Yeah, yeah right? after all this, it's uh, really controversial. Good. It's really good. Well, I don't know if we're gonna have time to watch it because we have a lot of other things to watch, including Break some Star Wars guys. We're definitely gonna be talking about Rise of Skywalker uh, because no, we have not seen it, but yes, the internet has. We won't do that until after the break, but we are repping our Star Wars apparel right now. Uh, you deviated a little bit, but it's still cool because you're heroes and villains for the win. I'm a large mammal. There's only so much Star Trek, Star Wars uh, extra large. You call yourself a large mammal? Yeah, large Bolivian mammal. <laughs> okay. Mm That's, that got the, the room yeah. next door to us. They like that one. Yeah, because those two skinny kids laughing at me, I know. Let me ask, was that an Alex or a Cody laugh? That was a both. Yeah, Ooh, the collective. I heard word. both. You got the never both. Never heard anyone describe themselves like that. It's wow, funny. I've never mammal. seen somebody want to fist pump me less than John Roca just wanted to fist pump me. <laughs> fist bump, pump you, bump you? Uh, what did I say? Fist pump. Oh, bump. I meant like bump. bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke wrong. I'll fist pump you. Yeah, what? totally. One Guys, together. heroes, villains. Guys, heroes and villains. Uh, loving this clothes. I wear th I wear this jacket all of the effing time. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I get compliments on it everywhere I it's go. It's a great jacket. The bombers are pretty dope as I well. Really, I, I love might this steal one. this one. If you guys want, go to heroesvillains.com. If you want to look cool like us, heroesvillains.com. You can get 10% off using the code Live 10 at checkout, like Collider Live, live 10 at checkout, heroesvillains.com. Uh, also, there's an extra 15% off Sith collection today. So the Sith Ooh. collection has an extra 15% off. So that's 10% off the 15% off. That's 25% off the Sith collection. Get this it's hat. Yeah, yeah you're wrapping This that is hat. one of my favorite hats all time now. Yeah, it's in its the 15% off with the live 10 on top of that. So and you just have to use the codes. Present. You don't have to do math. I'm so grateful right that they that we have this stuff to rep 
at the screening at the today. Screening, yeah. yeah, it's pretty dope. And I always get really cold in the screening, so I was like, okay, they've got a lot of cool Star Wars stuff, but I wear my jacket. Yeah. So one Perfect. more time, heroesvillains.com, guys. Ten percent off using Live Ten. It's the holidays. Go get some stuff for your family, your friends, etc. We'll be back after this break, guys. We are going to be talking about, of course, Rise of Skywalker, and then also Quentin Tarantino. Is, is not doing a Star Trek movie now? Was he really ever? Let's talk about it. See you guys in a couple minutes. Got, lady, what's I, that face? I always think this is pirates, but then I remember I know. it's royalty free music. You did this really interesting thing right before we started. What it was it? No, you were like, you were like swallowing air. Oh, because I was did. gonna talk, and I was uh, like, no, what? This is not Pirates of the Caribbean by Klaus Bedell. Klaus, I like it though, Cody. Klaus Bedell. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, he came up with the theme. The theme, but, then but Hans, Hans did Zimmer most of the came, score. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't Cody care. Hall having some extra fun today in there, and I love that. I'm on the same page with Roka here. We're having yeah, a good time. Yeah, play it, play it. You guys are I see what he's doing. Yourself. I like it. I see what he's doing, too, and honestly, I like it. I like everything Roka does on this show. Oh, stop. It's the most annoying thing about him is that he's not <laughs> annoying on this show. But he's annoying outside of the show. Oh, my God. We fight like <laughs> cats and dogs. <laughs> but on the show, it's like we get in here, and I'm like, damn, but what, he's good. But, John, it's do you Zima. feel like it's because you're yourself more on the show than in any other show you're on? Yes. This show and the other show that I co host, the Geek Buddies podcast, that's the most fully Roka you'll get. Right. So yeah. what happens Because I love you guys. I love being with you guys. So I get we to love like, having put my walls down and have good fun with you all. Yeah. And I respect you all so me. Oh. I'm gonna take Mance's ass and then I'll be <laughs> right next ass. to it. Wow. What, what's that soundbite from yesterday, Cody? Did we get that? Oh no. no. What was the yesterday oh. soundbite? I don't remember. Damn it. it was what was a good it? One. When you're a black person or something. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> You think oh, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You looked at me and you said, You think you're black. <laughs> but what were we actually talking about? <laughs> Wait, what just happened? I, I literally was looking at the wrong. Yep. Wait, yep. Roka, what just happened? I what happened? Literally. What happened? That Wait. was by far. <laughs> what happened? Wow. So, uh, FOMO. FOMO right now. What the fuck just happened? So, uh, oh my God. Yeah. Did you see? Yes. Yeah. I, shut. Everybody, shut the fuck up. So, and, and speak. So we were. Uh, you're like. Uh, Don't before shut break, the fuck up. Yeah. Before break or during break, you're like, hey, pull up. Some, some Twitter <laughs> so we can talk about reactions. <laughs> and so one of those was like, you mentioned Wendy Lee. So I go, Wendy Lee Twitter in Google. And I get, and I just see a handle that I click on. And I start going down and I go, oh, she's retweeting a lot. Where's her Star Wars reaction? And I keep going down. I'm like, where's her fucking, set? what is this? What is this thing? And it's like, Wendy Lee, verified. but not verified. Same. Two two Wendy Lees, but not the Wendy Lee Zaney that we wanted to uh What did, what talk do you got? About. Porn star? No, he was just I have no idea who this person Wait, why are you guys laughing so hard because, though? What'd she tweet about? Because his reaction went oh, I went, oh <laughs> shit. What did you find? There was it literally they nothing. Were I wish porn. Porn. No, I it's wish fine. I wish okay, they I'm gonna go porn. back then. There's I'm nothing go to back. be ashamed of if you're looking not at, at porn. <laughs> 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 Wait, Get it? Because he's looking stuff about the rise uh, of Skywalker. Get it? It's a reporter at no, the I Los don't. Angeles the Times. Rise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was making an erection oh, joke. Oh, penis joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. it now. There you go. <laughs> Here's Thanks, the thing Cody. that got me. It's a reporter at the Los Angeles Times. The first tweet I read was, layoffs hit ICM partners as WGA fight drags on. Did yeah. you see that as Leia? Did... Did I see that as like, Leia? Layoffs. Layoff. Did Layoff. you see like, oh, Leia? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. No, I just saw. I just saw an industry kind of thing that okay. I thought Wendy Lee Zaney might <laughs> retweet. So, here's the deal. Let's start <laughs> over. Yes. The whole show. The whole no. show. The whole show. The whole Dan damn Dan thing. Dan Dan Dan. Let's move into this serious rise of. It's oh, very serious. serious. Okay. Rise of Skywalker. The reviews are out. And uh, as Star Wars fans are, it seems to be divided amongst the fans, the critics alike. We had tons of people from this office and people who have been on this show who went and saw Rise of Skywalker last night at the premiere. And they all have thoughts. And again, very cryptic across the board. But Mark Riley, let us know what the people are saying. Well, I guess it's more social media reactions now, right? We get reviews Social media when? reactions. Tonight? I believe the review embargo lifts at midnight tonight. tonight. Yes. Ooh. So there'll be the, the full will, on ones. I will be but... live streaming from my YouTube, youtube.com slash Roxy Stryer. Nice. Uh, I'll put it to I'll you like it. this way. Well, me? Where where would you like me to start on the spectrum of, of reactions? Just, your, just maybe like the top two that, that made you go, oh, I either like... good or bad. I, I just want you to start. Yeah. Okay. Mark Ellis. <laughs> Mark Ellis. <laughs> what did Mark Ellis do? I love hearing him. Eminem, Roxy. Eminem. <laughs> Mark like, Ellis says, I'm start. emotional, overwhelmed, surprised, shocked, and stunned. More than anything, I'm happy. Thanks for coming through one more time, Star Wars. Okay. That is, <laughs> that is, that is a good response. I'm glad that he's happy with it. It's a very... Um, it's a very Mark Ellis thing mm -hmm. to say, I feel like. Absolutely. Where it's like, it, this is something he loves. He's not going to be specific about anything. He's not going to mention any characters. Any mo he's just going to say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and okay. I, it, 
I tend to agree with him on a lot of movies. I do too. So I'm happy about that. What else we got? Okay, Wendy Lee from the L.A. Times writes. Oh wait, wrong one. Okay, Wendy Lee Zaney <laughs> writes. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Who looked fantastic last night. Yeah, yeah she did. That coat was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Is filled with jaw dropping moments and gorgeous cinematography. Can't really wrap my mind around it yet. But wow, congrats to J.J. Abrams for bringing this incredible saga to its conclusion. Wow. A lot of can't wrap my minds around it that I saw. John, what do you make of that? There, it was a lo- just well, so many things to unpack, or they don't want to say how they feel exactly only after they're yeah. seeing it once. Well, we talked about our movie talk. It seemed to be the prevalent thing, even in the positive uh, social media reactions, was a lot of boxes, a lot was shoved in here, a lot to process, a lot to think about. So to me, it feels like they were trying to satisfy a lot of people at once with one movie. That's why it's probably two and a half hours. So, um, mentally, that prepares me for what I'm going to watch when I'm going to the theaters today. Okay. It doesn't make me 100% excited, but it does make me curious to see how they try to do it. And I hope I feel like Ellis does, and less like some other people like Scott Mendelson do, or Eric Eisenberg. All right, let's hear from one of them. Scott Mendelson. what did he have uh, well, to say? Well, let me for... look him up. Real quick, let me give you Haley Fouches. Okay. Uh, Rise of Skywalker is a rocky at the start, but ultimately I had a pretty darn good time at the movies. It's a whole lot of movie. That's why I want to do it, because of what you said. Yeah. It's a whole lot of movie that ticks a lot of boxes. Maybe too many boxes. It ticked many of mine. It may tick some of yours. There will be many opinions this is one of them. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Rocky at the start was something that I saw a couple of times as well. I did too. From Perry as well, I believe. Yeah, Perry mm-hmm. said that yeah. too, yeah. Mm-hmm. But then Perry said once it takes off, it goes, I think was her. Well, uh, uh, Frosty said that. He said, a uh, lot to talk about, Gonna talk. not going to talk about it till after the film What he goes said out. was, I think I'm in the minority. Yeah. Yes. Which I couldn't tell what the majority was. So right. I don't know the what majority, the minority is. The majority, it seems like it was general. It was fun. It, I liked it. So but would him being in the minority mean he hated it or loved it? He probably just didn't like it as much as everybody else. I would assume. I kind of thought him being in the... I don't know. I could go either way on that. What else you got, Riley? Okay, Scott Mendelson. Uh, at worst, I expected Rise of Skywalker to be a well-made movie that I didn't like or whose story choices I disagreed with. I was not expecting a genuinely bad movie with video game plotting, thin characters, weak action, and endless exposition of no consequences. Heartbreaking. That's fine. Ooh. I don't agree with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank in you, a Cody. lot of ways, yeah. not just because of this. Exposition um, just in seems general. to be a word that people are throwing out a lot of too. Though, how do you guys feel, Darina? If this is a very uh, expositiony movie, is that going to upset you? I no, I'm not going to like any of these movies like the original. So I mm. just usually just go in with like low expectations. I was like, I'm going to have fun, and that's what it seems like. I do feel that most people that I've talked to and texted with and including their reactions on social media are being a little nice and it sounds like they're like, oh, it's fun. But nobody wants to say it was bad and I feel like if it was any other movie, like a Zack Snyder movie, like even if it had a lot of exposition, people would be like, this sucks. But they can't say it because it's Star Wars. Also, That's how I feel. Also keeping in mind that when you go to a premiere, it feels different than when you don't go to a premiere. The hype mm-hmm. is real. Right. You're seeing all of these people walk the carpet. They're all watching the movie with right. you. Everybody's cheering anytime somebody comes on screen. Mm-hmm. So it is, you do tend to drink the Kool-Aid a little more. Of course, because you, you're at a party. You're with your friends. It's fun. You're drinking. You're eating. Of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what happens. Mark, give me another one. Maud Garrett. I realized within the first 20 minutes of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker that it was the best film in this trilogy, and it wow. kept getting better right through to the end. Thank you. May the Force be with you. Mod then continues, there was a lot of pressure to wrap up all the components of Skywalker Saga, but was handled, handled well. There's considerable fan service, may bother some, question mark, answers to some previous questions, but the end felt satisfying. I'm interested to see how fans will like this once they've seen it. I'm just... I'm just surprised with her tweet and happy about her tweet, but surprised because she says within the first 20 minutes when everybody else seemingly keeps saying that the beginning is not great. Right. So she says within the first 20 minutes she knows. And I I did see a lot of tweets saying it was the best of the trilogy. Mm -hmm. I I saw, I I don't know who tweeted this, but somebody said that if you uh, hated The Last Jedi, you you might really like this. And if you love The Last Jedi, uh, I saw the opposite of that. Okay, there you go. I saw. It's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised by this in the least just because of The Last Jedi. I I think that think that there has been a. Uh, a conversation that has started off of The Last Jedi that has devolved into some of the worst kind of film criticism and, and talking and just appreciation of other people's opinions that you're, you're not going to be able to avoid this. There, this, is, this is a lightning rod of fandom at, in the middle of everything right now. This is fandom 
At its best, at its worst, you decide. I think that at its y- loudest, at its <laughs> loudest, for real. Yeah. But I think that that's okay to have all of these opinions, mm-hmm. and that Star Wars is personal to so many people like me. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's it, it it's so hard to suss through all of this right mm-hmm. now. Um, I'm literally trying to. My brain is in the next room with the Booth Boys right now because as I'm reading this, because I literally don't care. I don't want to care. Well, I, I don't want to fill in anything. Well, I think Cody has his whiteboard going on. I'm yeah, sure I he just checked out. Oh, yeah. yeah. You did, Cody? No, not really. I just try not to listen to these too much because mm-hmm. a lot yeah. of times these post premiere yep. tweets do spoil things but by saying things like, yeah. "Oh, the ending of this movie," like for example, for Infinity War, when people mm-hmm. are like, "Oh, the end of this movie is devastating," you're, right. gonna be, you're like, "Okay, so everyone that, fucking dies." Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. like the, <laughs> hyper, the hyper, stupid, hyperbole. So I try to stay away from yeah. these. Yeah. yeah, I I did find that all hyperbole all or hyperbole. Call, hmm? what, hyperbole or hyperbole? How do you hyperbole. Say that? hyperbole. That's the word hyperbole. Oh, oh I did say it right. Okay. Uh, I find that I found that this time most of our colleagues were incredibly respectful about their tweets, though, in, in terms of not giving anything I'm getting away, that. yeah. Uh, which I was really appreciative of. Do you guys think that this is going to be even more, uh, even more divided than The Last Jedi, if, no. if that's even possible? No, because I don't think J.J. is going to take big swings. I think J.J. is going to— Even hearing this? Yeah, oh, even yeah. hearing this. I think J.J. The fan service is what keeps coming up in a, a majority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I'm going. And too. I think mm-hmm. J.J. knows, like, look, I'm just going to leave people feeling as happy as possible, yep. and we're all going to walk away from he's this. A, he's and whatever you think of him. He's a safe director. He is a safe director. And yeah. yes, he do, does he make some strong choices within the safety of the parameters he set yep. up? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yes, but he doesn't go out of the box most of the time. Ryan did that with Last Jedi exactly. for better or worse, whatever your feelings are. And that's so, what started all this. Yeah, I exactly. I really so I, believe. And I think J.J. knows, and I think that's why they brought him back. They're like, look, can we just bring everybody back here and we'll just all kind of feel right. good? So I think it's not going to be as divisive as Last Jedi, but I do think people will have an issue with it in retrospect. You look at Mance. Mance loved it last night, this morning. He woke up and, sent, and tweeted a three-tweet thread about it. With a little more perspective and sense. And then the answers, yeah. please. Holy yeah. And then he and then he Holy tweeted shit. great soundbite. <laughs> then he tweeted the best Star Wars movie and a poster of Empire. And I Empire was like, Strikers. this is why Scott and yeah. I were like, yeah. 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 But but he said like um, I would love to. Oh, I yeah, just sure. want to hear the tweet. No sure. no no, don't be sorry. I, no. I'm just curious because I didn't see Scott, and I seriously have been up to all hours looking at everybody so I could possibly <laughs> just find reading so, yeah, so, my, so, my okay. Skywalker yeah. tweets all night and not Straight sleeping. Up. So up. the the Mandalorian wrote the Rise of Skywalker really awesome. The best of the new trilogy, really fun, lots of humor, a big heart, so many surprises. It's everything Star Wars fans are hoping for and more. A very satisfying conclusion. A lot of fan service, mm. but I loved it. Uh, do you want to get that tweet uh, thread that he went? Okay, yeah, here right we are. Yes. Okay, now that I slept on it, had time to process it, and the thrill has tapered more thoughts on Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Overall, I really did love it. I was entertained. It's a lot of fun, and I did not know where it was going. When it was over, I was happy and satisfied. But it's not a perfect movie. The plot is convoluted, and some of it feels forced and contrived. There's a lot going on in Rise of Skywalker. Too much, actually. For director J.J., if The Force Awakens equals Star Trek 2009, then Rise of Skywalker equals Star Trek Into Darkness. Hmm, interesting. But when The Rise of Skywalker works, and most of the time it does, it's awesome. Lots of surprises and payoffs, fun action, and the cast has great chemistry. They're together a lot. Some Star Wars plot points echo both Empire and Return of the Jedi in a good way, and I do love the fan service. Still, the greatest Star Wars movie of them all is Empire Strikes Back. He how finishes do you guys that. feel about? He's correct about that. How mm-hmm. do you guys feel about fan service? The the word. I... If you if you had to say whether or not you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, what do you think about fan service? I I'm not a, as big of a fan of fan service as most people. I I yeah. That's just that's why I haven't liked some of this stuff as much as other people. How oh. do you feel, Mark? I will bring it up using this example. Did you feel that Cap? Uh, wielding Mjolnir in uh, Mew Mew. Mew Mew in Endgame was fan service. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, I th- I felt it was consistent with the story and what it was set up in Age of Ultron. I'm not right. saying fan service is a bad thing. I'm yeah, yeah, I exactly. do think that was fan service. And so when I whether you like when it or I not. Co- yeah. when I consider it fan service, it really did service a a portion where I was screaming and yelling. But I then went right back to Age of Ultron where it was set up in story and how we all went through this journey f- to get to Endgame. So it made sense in the, so in, yes, in the like, story. So I loved it. You yeah, like so fan service. I, but to me, if it, so my point is if it works organically within story, if there's a okay. fan service moment that comes in that's like, oh, my God, I can't believe, let's say – uh, let's say uh, Asajj Ventress comes back. Mm. I know that's probably not going to happen. Cool. And, um, and all of a sudden she's in there and you're like, whoa, 
oh, and she's like wielding the lightsaber, and you're like, live action, my God, Clone Wars, she came in and and then, but there's no reason for her to be there other than she's just there, then I, I would have a problem with that afterwards, after it wore off. I felt like more so to Attack of the Clones, Yoda picking up his lightsaber to fight Count Dooku was a little fan service. Mm. Okay. Does whereas, that make sense? Whereas when he fought Palpatine in uh, Revenge of the Sith, it felt more natural, it, organic. It did. Within the story. It did because agree. Yoda had to kick some ass, sense. and it, he had to yeah. he had to step up because it's like, oh shit, Palpatine! Right? right now he's revealed. Whereas before, it's like even they even made that joke. Yoda drops the lightsaber mm-hmm. and picks up his cane and does this funny moment that like he just he just like. Whooped yeah. Count Dooku's ass, but and then he's you know it just didn't work for John, me as much. Yeah. How do you feel, John? For, for me, fan service if it's earned and uh, validated by the story and the structure you've set up ahead of time, I think it's great because we all instinctively want fan service. But the fan service we gravitate to is the organically correct fan exactly. service that makes sense within the story. But yeah. Star Wars, and I'll tell you this, this is honest with how I approach Star Wars. I'm not going to know every planet, every species, every you ship. You're not a real and, fan. But, right, and, and that's fine. Yeah, but that's what I do love about Star Wars is the philosophy of Star Wars, mm-hmm. the concepts, the themes. Those are things that I gravitate to. Ken and I talk about this all the time. Ken is always going to destroy me in a Star Wars trivia competition. But I will go toe-to-toe with Ken about the philosophy of Star Wars. Right. That's what always excites me and interests me because I think that's what it's born on with the Joseph Campbell but story. based on these tweets... Yeah. If I had to guess, then I think you're going to like this movie. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to go in, sit back, relax, and enjoy the movie. I didn't hate Last Jedi. I hated the first 30 minutes, and then it was the greatest Star Wars I've ever seen. Mm. So for some me, some of it is. Some of it, yeah. And the whole some, though, the, some, some hit, of, the whole though separation of the that's maybe the greatest imagery I've ever. I watched seen it again last Wars. night, and yeah. I was so happy I did. Yeah, I yeah. love that movie so much. I, I keep I, waiting I to rewatch it. it and not like it because the world keeps trying to convince me. Mm-hmm. You should like, but what I you really like. no, totally. Yeah. I just keep thinking like, oh, yeah. maybe this time. Whereas I'm the opposite. I'm like, because I because some of it I loved so much. Yeah. Well, and like that 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 scene with Luke and the at not ATMTs oh, or whatever yeah, yeah. they're called. Like that's gorgeous. Oh, that's some gorgeous, gorgeous oh, yeah. scenery. But uh, but I just can't get over Canto Bite. I just fast forward every time. I, and every time I'm just like people. It's like I can't do it. Like people yeah. think this is the best Star Wars movie, and I cannot well, with this this part. It's especially yeah. and Canto and, Bite is rough. Yeah. I get and, it. And, and, and I mean, everybody agrees Canto Bite. Canto Bite's rough. And but speaking rough. of fan service, also I feel like and this happened in the prequels already. Every time a character says I have a bad feeling about this, that to me is like. Like blatant fan service that you don't need that like that that doesn't do anything for the story. That's other tradition. Than, right, That's tradition exactly. in the Star Wars universe. Right, exactly. But but now because we've had so many movies, that's when I get I'm like, yep, there it is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It, maybe maybe if the story's really good and well crafted, then I don't mind it. Right. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, when the moment occurs, it feels right. Right, not when they're just like, oh, we need to add this line because yeah. fans are gonna like, like it. I, I was rewatching Revenge of the Sith over the weekend at this at the Christmas Co, just to escape for a little bit and. I forgot that Mace Windu gets his hand cut off. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when I saw it, I was like, that's fan service that isn't merited. The idea of the hand cut, that's a Luke thing. That's a right, Anakin right. thing. That's not a Mace See, I thing. disagree. Okay. That's a, that's, I didn't that's, like it. That's okay, a but Jedi. Mark, what's the thing about Star Wars that you don't like, though? I can't abide. That's it. Is that it? That's you. That's the Suicide Squad for the DC Universe. There's Everyone's some... allowed to hate that. <laughs> There's I love a... Suicide Squad. Oh my. <laughs> There's certain things in Star Wars like Canto Bite, like, uh, <laughs> um, you know, if we're talking special edition stuff, Return of the Jedi, when we get that new Lapty Neck song, it just doesn't fit in there. Ooh, I don't like Jedi Bo- Rocks. Is Jedi rough. Rocks. I don't like Boba Fett flirting with one of the dancers. It just kind of came Ooh, weird. Agreed. And that's and that's and Lucas. And Lapty Neck is so good. It, Lapty Neck is is it's amazing. That weird <laughs> disco <laughs> that they did in 1983 yeah, so was so perfect. But then we'd had something different, and that's Lucas. Lucas wanted to change it. That's his original vision. Right. That's what he wanted to go with, and we have to accept it. Right. Let's talk money for a second. Oh shit! Bags oh, of money. I was, I was oh, just, oh, bags oh, of wait, wait, don't be, wait, don't be a stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> so how much am I getting now for this movie? What do you guys think, box office wise? I mean, it, it's so hard at this point to predict. But is it possible that this blows every other Star Wars movie out of the water, or no? I don't think so. I think it's going to open at a healthy 220 million uh, for the first week in domestic. But I don't think it's going to touch uh, Endgame or uh, Infinity War for that matter, or even mm-hmm. Force Awakens. I think it'll maybe beat. The Last Jedi, but I think because of some of the divisiveness and because of some of the the feelings about this, it might it it might not open huge like we we want. But then I I was in a conversation with a lot of my uh, patrons over the weekend 
who said it's going to be huge. I'm talking to people all the time that want to go see this and like kind of outside. Time too. Yeah, Christmas time. So maybe not opening huge, but I think it's going to make a ton of money and be one of the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time. Yeah, because <sighs> even if, uh, and, and I've seen other people that we, we haven't read their tweets, but like people like uh, Jermaine Lucier, our friend at mm-hmm. io9, mm-hmm. Uh, like he's he said he's going to write a bad review, right? Like there's mm-hmm. people that definitely are out there that I don't know if I saw that as much for Last Jedi, but the general audiences don't read those reviews, right? Mm-hmm. We read them, right? So mo- most people are just like, the new Star Wars movie, we're going to go see it no matter what. And we're going to go see it several times with our family on Christmas Day. That's, I think it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's not gonna do badly. I think it would be a monster, monster hit if all of these tweets were universal in their praise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because they're not, I think the people that don't want to go see it are going to find uh, a reason not to. And, and see cats instead. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Or yeah. because what his mom is. What <laughs> went to mom. what went to Force Awakens is the rewatchability. People went back over and over and over again because it really captured what they loved about the original trilogy. Yeah, and Star Wars was back finally. After Star Wars many back, years, yeah, right, exactly. And, yeah. and with this, because of Last Jedi, it yes. had a higher hurdle. Yeah, to yeah, cross over, to jump over, and I don't. Th- and it sounds like from the tweets that they don't a hundred percent do it. But I think there's enough here from the tweets that make you feel possibly feel happy or going oh, back I'm to so the spirit of it still. that enough people will go that it'll be between, in my opinion, between Last Jedi and Force Awakens. It'll land somewhere there. And I get, Overall. I, I want to throw this out to the table here Money-wise. and to the audience. When, when people are coming out of seeing a new Star Wars movie for the first time, if you love Star Wars like I do, you're going to be pretty euphoric just to have a new Star Wars movie. At least that's how mm-hmm. I feel. Yeah. Um, and then over the years, and this happened to me, over the years... I have come to appreciate the prequels so much. Thank you. When I did not like them, when I first saw them, Phantom Menace. Oh, I good came for you. out. I came out of Phantom Menace, and I was like, "No, that's good." And I remember fighting with my roommate at the time for hours about it because he was like, "That was a shit movie, Mark." And I'm like, "No, it wasn't." And then after many, many watches and many years had passed, I'm like, "Yeah, Phantom Menace was really not mm, that good." And then Attack of the Clones came out. And I was like, oh, and I walked out of that one a little bit prepared because of Phantom Menace, prepared and went, boy, that was shit. Mm -hmm. Then I came back (laughs) for Revenge of the Sith and I'm like, well, it's the best of the trilogy. But then years later, breaking my heart, years later, I've come back around on those things going, man, I appreciate it for this. I appreciate it for that. So I can't I'm not going to be able to even rank this thing for another year okay, and for seeing it, because that's just the way I do Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I like what I like. I love Many things about all the movies, but certain movies I put above the others. And it just comes over time with sitting with the story and seeing how it plays out, how it lands with you, how it settles, how, how you feel about it weeks from now. Watching it again, like watching it a year from now, what is it going to feel like in the context of all these movies? The saga, that's what gets it for me. You okay with that? The, the, well, I, well, I, I just was, was waiting for the – I was waiting for the – because he said I want to – Pose a question to this table and to the audience. Oh, sorry. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, so thank you, Roxy. I got a, I got a, a off on my little Star Wars soapbox. So we're soapbox. listening and waiting so, for this. So do you, <laughs> do you feel like that all of these reactions can truly be a a, a litmus test? No, because I feel like even what Scott Mance did exactly mm-hmm. what that's a short version of what it will be over right. time. Same thing. Uh, Christian's talked about it before, how his opinion on Last Jedi changed the it more did. rewatch. It really that he had. changed actually. A lot of people have things like that. So no, I, I don't. But I, I usually don't find people go from loving something to hating something. It's usually like you you've got about three check marks that you could like if it's a scale of one to ten you can only really move about like three different spots. Yeah. But that's a lot of spots, you know? If you think a movie is a 10, you could eventually get to a seven, but you're usually not going to think a 10 movie is then a one the next time you see it. Mm-hmm. I just wish I like loved or hated any of them. <laughs> it's like I'm just kind of like, oh, they're you're cool. In, you're indifferent to both of them? No, and not, not, <clears throat> not indifferent. Like there's just things I really, really enjoy gotcha. about them, and then there's stuff that I'm not into. It, but there's, fair. but does none of them have been what it was like to be a kid and watch the originals for the first time? Don't it's you just, think that's because you're not a kid? M- maybe, but but other movies do make me feel that way oh. now, right? It's just it's just when it comes to these, uh, I guess, re- reboots, right? These these franchises that we keep watching over and over again. Like, like I was very happily surprised with Joker. I did not expect that, that yeah. I was going to get a movie that I loved so much, right? And as much, and I know people didn't like it, but that was that that was exciting for me to see to sit in the theater and watch something that was uh, a part of a franchise. Did Joker make you feel like you were a kid? Yes. Okay. 
Shazam did, though, did it? No, it really did. <laughs> it's just did really Shazam? weird. Because I was a yeah, fucked up kid, Shazam Roxy. Shazam did that for me. See, I feel like Shazam did Shazam's that. awesome. Yeah, I feel like Shazam brought yeah. you back to being a kid. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, one of the greatest car- cartoons or animated things I saw after Force Awakens was the picture, was this, someone did a cartoon where the guy is an old guy walking in to see Force Awakens, and when he walks out, he's a 10-year-old kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right. I love that. Oh, that I was love a that. Great and that's, and uh, to yeah. be fair, that does happen to me every time I do see a new Star Wars movie and you see the opening yeah. crawl, no matter what. Oh, yeah. like because you get that's, that ping in your chest. Yeah. Well, and that's the best Ooh, part. What do you think is going to be the first that word? That silent moment between Far, Far sentence. Away right. and... The crawl. That's the best part of watching a new Star Wars movie because you know that's you're never gonna feel that happy. Yeah. Like like even afterwards, unless you really love it. Who's gonna be the first name that they name? In the crawl. Yeah. John Cena. Yes, <laughs> John Cena would be the the person. Cody. Well done, Cody. I think it's gonna be John, John Cena has led the rebellion. Probably. Now, probably legacy or like Ray or Kylo. Any, just, I, I would any say name. Luke or Kylo. Maybe. I feel like it's Luke Skywalker. <coughs> Maybe. <laughs> what do you What's think? Up, guys? Okay. General Leia. It's Dorian. You think Leia? Probably I think Dorian. it'll be it'll be General Leia. Cody, yeah. any bets, guesses? What's up, guys? It's your boy Dorian. Probably Dorian. He doesn't Cody's really like, can we stop talking about Star Wars? <laughs> Alex, any thoughts? Who's gonna be the first name we see? Uh, I'm gonna go with Kylo Ren. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we will move on for Cody's sake. We will move on. Uh, yeah, thank God. Something. This was hard. Some, a story that I don't even know how it became and then how it was not and then it was and then it wasn't and now it's not Star Trek, baby. I know where you're going. What is happening, Mark Riley, in the world of Quentin Tarantino? Well, to a surprise to no one, I think. <laughs> This movie, Quentin Tarantino, basically, I'm going to paraphrase here. He said, yeah, I'm probably moving on. He basically, in an regarding interview. Regarding a Star Trek movie. In, uh, regarding a Star Trek movie. Uh, he, let me find the, in Consequence of Sound, it's an interview he was doing. And when he was asked point blank, he said, I think I'm steering away from Star Trek, but I haven't had an official conversation with those guys yet, which I find hysterical yeah. that he said it here. How do you steer away from something you haven't spoken about? Right. Yeah. Now, I've certainly never been in a po- position to direct an R-rated version of a bi- big-budget, well-liked sci-fi franchise, but I would have to imagine that if I decided I was no longer interested in directing said film, I would have an official conversation with those guys immediately. So... uh yeah, he, he he's steering away from it, it looks like. I don't think it was ever in the cards. I think maybe they were developing it. They were looking into it. They were weighing the pros and cons. But or they just talked about it, and it just became news. Mm-hmm. Right? Because that's rumors for you. Yeah. But once it, one, I mean, I still want Tarantino look at that headline. Too. Quentin Tarantino directing a Star Trek movie. Yeah. That, that looks nice. created it. Yeah. And it kept going Click from here. Right? Yeah. Uh, I uh, chicken and beer. Mm-hmm. I know that Thad was not a fan of this, and, right. and Thad is a massive Star Trek fan. Roca, I don't know where you lied on Listen, this. I'm so sick and tired of Thad getting. Look, I am just oh, as big of a here. Star Trek oh, fan as Thad is. Really? Are you, All right. That's, I mean, that's why. I, that's why I asked you. Just after as big. Because I'm a pretty massive. big Star Trek fan. Like, like, did you like? Do you watch the new ones? The new yes, stuff? Discovery. And you both like seasons. It? I like the second season better than right, the first. That's what I keep hearing. And I still go back and watch the original series all the time. Now we're that may have me is Next Generation. I don't like Next Generation oh, much as everybody else. It's the best one. Certainly don't like Discovery. Or, I'm mean, sorry. Certainly don't like Enterprise Well, all. no. That, I don't like that one either. But I, but I will fight for Deep Space Nine. I will not fight for Same. Voyager. I don't think it makes you less big of a fan if you don't like something. No. It makes oh, you less I'm big of a fan say, if you don't like, see something. It's always like, what do you something? think, Dad? Hey, let's yo. Just, I'm just saying. I, but it's what, so let's just recount what happened. Um, <laughs> so I said, I said, you know, our buddy Thad didn't like this that much but john i know you're a big star trek fan what do you no, think you said i don't know how big of a star but, trek no no i said i don't know what you yeah. think i didn't say yeah. i don't know how big of a star trek fan you are oh, i know oh. you're a massive star trek okay. fan which is why instead of going to the two of you first i went to you to see oh. can i felt. sit next to you tonight <laughs> during the cast screening because this is i'm gonna awesome. be chill yeah. <laughs> roxy are gonna be like this yeah. see like, mark now you want to go because you want to i do want to see it with all of you crazy yeah. people but I love, are you I, kidding me i, asked I love you 45 times you did you did did. And I told you, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What What the? Oh, f- oh here's the Oof. M&M stare. Jesus it's like Christ. Cara de Fucci. That's like a, uh, it's kind of like you're giving him the death stare. Yeah, yeah, it was. Say it again. Cara de Fucci. Does that mean death stare? Oh, no. the M&M look. Fucci's kind of like, ew. Well, actually, I think I'm going to post a picture later today because... Uh, in because my, you have to, otherwise you won't do your true. New Year's resolution. Damn it. But in, uh, in this dope heroes and villains swag, I was, and I did my Leia hair, and I'm posing, and Dorina's taking pictures, and she goes, do your M&M. 
and I look fucking fierce. Yeah. Well, no, it's your ray hair. You can get oh, angry. Oh, yeah. What did I say? I'm an Leia. Leia. Oh, oh, sorry. I've seen your angry face. I was going to say I'm an M. <laughs> you got your hard face. You Boston Bruin. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, uh, yeah. what was the question? So, John, yeah, since you are a lesser Star Trek fan than Thad, <laughs> right, what are right. your thoughts? Lesser That's all time, really. That SOB. Yeah. Uh, no, um, I love that Thad loves Star Trek as much as I do. Um, or my probably this, a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. I was not, I was never thinking this was going to happen. I always thought it was way out in left field. And I'll tell you this, I had a conversation with the producer on the Mortal Kombat set visit, which uh, we'll be writing about in January. Um, oh, God. Oh, there, it is. there it is. But he Mortal produced Kill Bill, both oh, Kill Bills. And I asked him what he thought about this whole deal. He goes, he'll never do it. Mm-hmm. And he knew. He's like, no. You're saying do you think the producer it's... of Mortal Kombat is the producer of Kill Bill, who obviously knows Tarantino, right. who says that Tarantino was not going to do a Star Trek? Yeah, movie. he thought it was never going to happen either. And so uh, he's. It's just not. It. He doesn't work well in in restrained situations. And Star Trek would have to adhere That's to mythology what I mean. yeah. and restraint. And it's not a Tarantino thing because he likes to push the boundaries. He likes to take. So, what do you think it's just any chance. franchise that he couldn't do because he'd have to work with the studio? Yeah, because they so. wouldn't let him just do his Tarantino right. thing. Unless he was starting seen. a franchise. True, yeah, yeah. Point. But, but why, why do you think this came to be then? If if he was I think never people gonna... like Tarantino and people like the idea of Star Trek, and I think because but he talked about it a little bit and egged sure. it on a little bit and said that this would be a loophole for part of his. Why not? I film? mean, it's it's good publicity for him, and although he doesn't need it, it's always nice to be in the conversation. What's the TV series he's working on? Because I heard about that, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, he hasn't said yet. Well, um, he, yeah, right. He, he's I don't know. he's teased it. He's teased other mediums which right. he wants mm. to play with poetry, a... stage, and all this. Because that's the stuff he wants to do before he would make a Kill Bill three, right? He goes into. Yeah, he he actually goes into what's what's his tenth film. So obviously not Star Trek. Will it be Kill Bill three? He kind of alludes to it could be original. It could be something that I go out with a big bang, like something huge. Um, I could go out smaller. He doesn't. I don't think he knows yet. He said yeah. I could go out bigger or smaller. I, I'm paraphrasing, Roxy. But work with me here. <laughs> Um, well, I just can't picture him be like, I could go out smaller. <laughs> this Why is aren't you quote. reading you right, want, Mark? I will, I'm going to read a long quote. Do you want me to read it? It's it's very long. Well I, well, I just want you to paraphrase in a way that makes me know if he said bigger or smaller. In a strange way, it seems like this movie. <laughs> I just want you to start. <laughs> I can just picture Roxy listening to this, getting say closer I to the am, office. If I wasn't, I would Do you start say driving I faster? In the paper, the news, every day I am. Do you oh. yell at your ways? Do you get like more and more angry <laughs> when you're going? I actually don't think I drive faster. I think I drive jerkier because I'm like. Okay. <laughs> and if somebody so cuts good. you off, are you like. And you don't get lost while you're listening to Eminem? Obviously I do, Dorina, yes, but I get she lost does. no matter what I'm Aww. doing. I was like, maybe I he would out- help you. Wait, yo. D- Have you been d- taking it? I've been taking the outpost every day. Yo. Yo. That's my shit. That's so my you shit. love it now? I love Because you were complaining about it the first time. I love it Guess what, so Roxy? much. Okay. About a year ago, you could have had this experience. I understand I mean, you just that, didn't but let me live in the moment. Us. Let me live in the moment. No. I understand that. All right, I'm texting Josh. Let McCuga. me live in the moment. <laughs> wow. Can we, we have Josh it. call in, we please? We did it. When are we allowed to talk about what Josh is doing? I don't know. He hasn't announced it. Not yet. He hasn't announced it. Not yet. Yeah. God damn. I'm, I'm still know. waiting. I'm so proud Just be happy for him. Yeah. Cody, Alex, any thoughts on Tarantino and if you're bummed about the Star Trek thing? Do you I guys just even... assume... Oh, go oh. ahead, Dorena. Do you guys even care about Star Trek in general? Uh, yeah, I like it. I just figured this would never happen for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Now exactly what I was going to say. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Dory. We contributed. Word. You guys always contribute, especially both of you. Doing oh. fair minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy. <laughs> gonna hey, say Roxy, something. you rock. You rock too, Alex. Uh, rock stars. Yo, be nice to Alex Roca. It's Christmas. I am. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is he coming to the cat screen? I'm, no, but I'm bringing him to, to Star Wars. Thank you. Okay. I offered him my plus one. Uh, oh, that's you're nice, my friend. That's, that's right. Nice. I I have told I have told Alex and Alex, you know this is true. Forty five times to text me about any screening he wants to go to. Mm-hmm. Cody, are you going to? I, I did. I have texted you. About you te- that. you texted me about, about a while. Yeah. Roxy, you texted me say. about one that I. Uh, it was parasite. Yeah, that I didn't have a plus one to. You, you're one of the people I know one. that walk around with a plus one, like offering it to everyone. Every, like, if, if you need it, hey, let me know. Let me know. Because I remember you're, you're being very in that cool. position. It's uh, like uh, who, who the? F- I don't even know how they make the decisions about who the fuck is invited. Right. I, uh, all I know is I reach out for every single thing. I never once get invited mm-hmm. to a thing. I mm-hmm. reach out for every single screening. I'm not on a list. Right. I'm not like I, I, I reach out. 
Always. I think so, they only send it to actual like critics, critics, right? Um, I don't know. I have no idea, but I, who knows? But I just know it takes me so many hours yeah. to do this. So if somebody else wants to go, I know it's a pain in the ass. Right. So I want to take any of the people who, especially the people who I do shows with. Yeah. Like, it's not helpful for me to take my high school friends. Right, because you get to talk friends. about it on your shows. I'm happy to, but like, I'd much rather Alex talk about Star Wars with us. And historian than... voice. You just give me shit. Yeah. Because I take Shannon and my stuff. He's my college friend. Oh, shit. Start oh, fighting. no, no. Wow. I do fighting. it all on, the time. Go. I'm saying. Wow. How often do you do it? Do it. Broca, everybody's always saying, you Don't know. Don't my closet. Everybody's Broca. always saying. Fight. Stop listening to Eminem. Fight. Don't you think? Everybody always looks at me and says, I take a different person every single single time. I'm mm. with a different it's very nice. person every single time. I wish I was taking you guys all the time. But okay. you guys are going with yourselves because you're cool. Hey, Cody, cool. are you going to see it today? <laughs> When are you seeing I'm it? I'm seeing uh, the afternoon screening. Which Two o'clock? A plus one, yeah. We're, we're, all, we're oh, all together. Oh, so we're all together. We're are you going to sit with us Literally or are you going to avoid us? Literally, going to be together <laughs> on this I'm in the screening. balcony. I don't know where you all sit. I'm sitting in the balcony. Is that where you like Alex, it? you can sit with me or not sit with me, but I'm sitting in the balcony. What's up? Is that the better? Why are you saying that? Because I don't. Because I think down there, it's a mass of humanity on top of you. With the balcony, it's raked, huh? and so I like that idea. But the, but the balcony, you're looking below, and the movie's below you. Right. I don't like because that as much. I don't like that either, so we're sitting down on the be. thing. It's I don't care. Star Wars Episode Nine is below. It's I beneath was joking. You. I was joking. I mean, I like it. I like looking down onto the screen. I like the balcony look. I could see you liking that. Yeah. I just don't. I get anxiety. I mean, you like get last, your night, Dr. Last, night, <laughs> last night, Doctor Clutch. You're very particular about where you sit. I am. Last night, I started having an anxiety attack at Trader Joe's Why? with my girlfriend. I don't about oh. Star Wars. This is terrible. I'm getting no about people. I, I'm getting older, and anxiety comes from me. So like amongst, social anxiety yeah, 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 of being yeah. in Crowds. public. Yeah. yeah, I start to flip the fuck out. And my about, girlfriend, do you know what it's about, or you don't know what? No, it's it's about. A, it's, a, it's about my space. Like I'm I'm so sensitive about space stuff. That I get real like fucking antsy when my space starts to get encroached upon. Like yesterday, um, uh, we were halfway through our shopping at Trader Joe's, and um, you asked her to marry you. No, <laughs> right, right in the chip section. <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more, <laughs> that does seem anxiety inducing. <laughs> more people were slamming their carts into the aisle, and I started like, like cowering into the frozen section. And right. Lindley saw me from down the aisle. She's like, oh my gosh, she could walk through. She's like, honey, what's going on? I was like, I'm getting my anxiety. She's like, okay, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. So no, no, I can work through it. Just like walk me out of this area because I feel like I'm going to flip out and throw everybody's cart against the wall. Mm. And she's like, okay, okay, let's walk through it. So that's the thing. But like, typically when there is something like that, John, not to mm. psychoanalyze you, but there's something else going on. It's typically not the other people that are slamming their carts that's making you feel anxious. It's like usually something else. Like oh. like inside of you, not outside yeah. of you. I just don't saying. like to be pushed. Do you in, in John's defense, Cody. Trader Joe's is one of the most stressful places. In the world. Cody is I, not I wrong. Buys it, John. Yeah. Yeah. They do that on purpose. They I make the parking lots small yeah. on uh. purpose. See, I can be in a Costco all day long because that thing is huge. No, nah, man, I don't like to go anywhere where they're shopping. The space. Oh, I'm, I'm with fair. you, Darina. But I, I but, but, hate but I will it. say this: like last night, even last night, we were after we finished. I was paying for my groceries. This old lady came up with a flower. Old, I'm sorry. This is a 50, 60 year old lady. She came up with a flower. Your age. But as I was paying for my stuff, she went like this. Oh, next shit. Next to me as I was Can paying you? for my stuff. And I looked at Lynn. I went like this to Lynn. I'm going to kill her. But she's older. She just like probably thought you were hot. Right, and she's but like, it's how's it going? Like, give me a hug. I, know, I feel like it's a pressure. Yeah. I was at a some me papacitos, what she was saying. <laughs> but do you guys <laughs> think that? Oh, I just said, hug me, little daddy. But um, do you. Uh, do you guys think, though, laugh. it's because just people that are, like, being in public, especially when you're crowds, either you're at a movie theater, like, you know how you like to sit in a particular seat because of what might happen, or mm. people that are just at concerts. Yeah, but that, you like think, I just said, usually it's because of something. That's what what is it? So I, I sit where I sit because I'm afraid of getting shot during a screening. What? Oh, yeah, she has no. a particular I sit where yeah. I sit. Seat where do you sit? I sit on the aisle. I like to sit in the aisle. All right, I'll make a concession. I know, concession. that's why we sit. No, but I don't need to sit on the aisle seat. Okay. I need to be towards the aisle. I need the aisle seat. I can sit on anywhere in the three towards the aisle yeah. because, like, statistically speaking, I statistically speaking, I, like, read where a lot of yeah, people yeah, get yeah. shot are, and they usually, like, the gunman will turn in towards the middle. Towards the middle. And oh, it's just... hard for them to get out. Um, I yeah. thought it was just people with money that sat in the aisle. So, you know, yeah. 
Anyways. No, but do you guys memory. but do you guys think though that it's because when we're out in groups and we don't know strangers that mm-hmm. we because we can't control other people's actions, a lot of people are like, I don't know what's gonna happen, I don't know what's gonna happen, I wanna go home mm-hmm. and that's why so many people that's like what to I'm stay saying. home. Exact uh, either some like something, yeah. a lack of control I, I or have, something, usually as, something bigger. As happening. I said the other day, I have body dysmorphia, which means I think I'm larger than I actually am. And even on planes, like I, I, when I go on the set visits, I tell the publicist I have to sit in an exit roll aisle seat. I can't function unless I sit there because I feel like I'm encroaching on people's space. Hmm. And I feel self-conscious and I start to beat myself up that I'm fat and I'm ugly and I'm like this. This all, this is the narrative in my head. So well, when do, I get where do you into, think that comes from? Just from, well, just from childhood? Growing up that way and being told that by numerous people growing up as a kid, and including my dad, mm. uh, which we had to yeah. resolve later well, on. I feel like in like, our Hispanic community, you're either fat or skinny. It's not yeah, like yeah, you're there's too no skinny middle, too fat. There's yeah, no, either you're so not eating enough or you're eating too much. Yeah, exactly. There's no other way around it. So it's just, it's so I carry That's it with, funny. so like when I get, when I feel any anxiety, it's a feeling that I'm being uh, told that I'm, that I can't, like I'm being pressured and uh, you feel claustrophobic. Yes, I feel claustrophobic. Yes. But yes. I think everybody, like a lot of people, feel that way. Yes, just in I'm public in general. This. And yeah. like for me, like what what's helped me is not obviously not just weed, but uh, also just knowing that I cannot control what happens. Mm. I cannot control that other people. That helps pe- you. Yeah, but, but if I make a decision to say I can't control other people, but I can control my attitude. That's all I can do. So then, yeah, if something that. happens, and I'm like, how am I going to deal with that? Because that person's going to do something that might upset me. Yeah. So am I going to just you know get get super upset about that and try to get into the person? Or I'm just going to be like oh that sucks for them bye uh, i think you need uh, to um also because uh, i had it, workout your your workout <laughs> sure <laughs> Yeah, you but honestly, Roka, that won't, that will Dude, help, but, but it won't change it because you. I think that you'll feel that way no matter what you actually. Look. Yes, probably. Yes, and I think you need to be because um, you're not fat. Easier so if you're feeling yourself. that way. Forgive it's yourself. Not. Mm. Um, I had an anxiety attack the Do other day. Do you not day. like I that he's ab- touching you? Oh yeah, sorry. No, it's okay. He's his okay. friend, so right. I think that's it's probably more so strangers. No, I had an anxiety attack doing dishes the other day in my apartment because I started freaking out that I wasn't doing enough for my career, and I was it just turned me upside down. I said, oh, I need to do this because so many balls are in the air. Not only with work here, wedding, yeah. every balls in the air. Great, I'll take them. Um, whatever it may be, and I and I had to breathe. I had to use the force, and I literally went, dude, you gotta fucking be easy on yourself. Yeah. I kicked myself so up here in that moment that it just didn't. And later on, I was like, man, that was. I just have to be a little bit. And so mm. I see this from you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just don't uh, be so hard on yourself because I think you you just went into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, it's our our brains are our worst our own worst enemies. Oh, We're the ones that are always oh, saying we yeah. suck, we suck, we suck more so than other people. I like think... people say it out, out in the internet, obviously, but but we're the ones that make it feel shitty mm. more so than right. anybody else. And oh. you listen to that internet chatter sometimes yeah. if it comes after you. I know Roxy, you get it so bad sometimes. Yeah. We all have gotten it in a certain degree. That's why I don't understand people read the YouTube. I don't say why people should willingly read the YouTube. We Roxy. Do. I do. It's mind blowing to me. I would, I'd never. Yeah, read because it it does affect Listen, me. Listen, I think, not saying that you haven't, but for mm. me, like you've got to do the work mm-hmm. to feel whole. Yeah. I have put in so I can't even explain how many hours of work and therapy and mm-hmm. uh, every every single thing that I've done to be whole because I wasn't. Right. And I'm not again. This is not you. I'm not no, saying you are not done the therapy. But th- for me, anytime there was a thing like that, it was. A, a different issue like mm. I, I think we all what we all have things that stress us out and like Doreen I love your stance on you, what you can change is your attitude because it took me so long to realize that me too so long yeah. um, yesterday there I was at getting coffee and I went to dump a little of the tea in the the hole because it was too hot and I wanted to put some ice in it and the woman came over and literally waxed my arm and goes don't pour that down there Oh, come on. The woman that worked there, she, don't pour that. And I, Did you get all M&M on her? <laughs> I didn't. I, I, was, I was annoyed, but I should. But I, I looked at her. I said, it, if you just tell me that, then I won't. Right. You don't need you to, don't need to do, do what that. you just did. Exactly. I pulled, I pulled her arm off. Be- because, don't, because don't fucking touch me. Right. You don't know me. Right. But I, I realized that that even has deeper things like the uh, not feeling like strangers can touch you or wherever. Mm-hmm. Like everybody has things from where they come from, right. right? And what actually is going on in that moment? Why am I? Does it hurt? No. Right. Am I physically in pain? No. So why am I actually so 
mad that and I'm she gonna just touched it, my arm. And I'm gonna and, yeah. I, and are you gonna let it ruin your whole day? And am day? I gonna let it fuck up my whole day? Yeah. So when I was younger, absolutely. Right. Absolutely I would have gone and told <laughs> I think it's ironic because I am telling you guys, but I would have gone and told everybody all day, you know what this bitch right, did? Right. right. Um and instead I I uh, you know, I you get in your car and you think like why am I so mad at this? What is this bringing mm-hmm. up inside me? Mm. What from and and you really have to like not have done the work. Continue every day. I have to tell myself like, you're acting like this because of who you are. You are the way you are because of things that have happened to you. Let's go over that right now. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's more. It's more of a you thing as to how you handle things. Okay. I mean, obviously, bad things are going to happen no matter what. That's the thing, right? And as much as like a lot of us can be control freaks, mm. we have to understand that we cannot control what happens to us. Like people are, your loved ones are going to die. I don't mean to like yeah. get to, like you know sad here, but that's going to happen. We're all going to die. That's why I'm obsessed with death. But that reminds me that because of that, then. We can't control it, so we might as well try to do the best we can with what we have. Well, in my, That's in, all we can do. And mm. my therapy is me talking to Lindley and telling her. Because five years ago, I would never, never have told yeah. her. Yeah, right. So that's yeah. the steps. That's awesome. That's the steps. Yeah, the right? fact that she saw you. And then also, John, I commend you for knowing what you needed in that moment, yes. which was I need to get out of this situation. Like, yeah. I, I don't need to leave the store. I can still get my grocery, but I cannot be in this current aisle right, right. now. Yes. Right. Because I'm guessing probably years ago, you might not have known that that's what you needed. You might have. Curled up and curled not up. been able to say that or I might have articulate froze yeah. or push my car through people yeah. to right. get out of there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like, too, it's like, do you ever feel like you, 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 get over one hurdle and then all of a sudden you see a new one and you have to Every go, oh day. yeah, mm-hmm. here's a here's a new way to think about it. Because when I said, oh, forgive yourself and, and don't mm. be so hard on yourself, I had to remind myself of that the other day and that was something I would never have done like years yeah, ago yeah, yeah. and therapy has helped and talking to Julie has helped mm. and talking to myself and trying to not maybe meditate but just getting into my head and going, okay, listen, you dummy, come on, stop, right. yeah. stop getting all, mm, just enjoy, breathe. I started to really breathing is forgetting good. that I, I was not breathing in these moments. I honestly, the best medicine for me is uh, music. Hot. That's, Weed. Well, obviously. Booze. Like actual medicine. Yeah. But uh, def- specifically those two combined yeah. is pot and music. For sure. But, uh, but that's, it's, that, it's anything that, that you can kind of, if you're super stressed out, like there's got to be something whether it's it's film mm. right we all love movies tv for me it's music right if i listen to music i have a super crappy day it'll instantly make me feel as shitty like there's little things like that but it's also like you said it's being conscious and talking to yourself yeah. right and and being aware that it's like it's not it's like dr strange which i know you hated but i loved but uh, tilda swinton's character says it, the ancient one she's like yeah. it's not about you right. as long as as long as, right. as, as as i keep reminding myself that i'm not in the truman show then it's not about me so i need to just chill out because other people aren't there mostly most of the time to attack me they're dealing with their own issues right, right. But that woman when she slapped you that was about you well clearly because you were doing it wrong you were doing yeah, it. yeah yeah, that was, yeah. But, <laughs> roxy you did something on a, yeah. to tease a really great pre-tape that we did do oh for... by the way collider live fans were there and came up to me and, and said hello and said they, they, they love what we're doing oh, with the show that's nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. they were where that. At, at the coffee shop oh nice. where the woman hit me um <laughs> continue <laughs> maybe great. it was a collider live fan that hated you yeah right <laughs> you suck i'm in the comment section um <laughs> We did a great pre-tape. I I wanted to tease just a little bit of the pre-tape where we talk about being thankful and certain things that, Roxy, you said some things that really stuck with me that I can't wait for everybody to see. But uh, I- It will be the, we're gonna have it It'll be the New Year's Eve one. So there will be a Christmas Eve one and there will be a New Year's Eve Yeah, so December 31st, this this is the one I'm referencing. But uh, some of the anxiety kind of melts away when I touch on goals. When I touch mm-hmm. on a dream that I want to happen, mm-hmm. just a little bit, whether it's I think about it. For mm-hmm. me, it's writing. One page. I have a reminder on my phone every day. Page a day. Just write one page a day. If I can do that, I feel like grounded and I feel like, okay, I'm on the right track. Right, and right. it reminds me and it balances me and centers me. Totally. Mm-hmm. And Riley, for me, like one of the th- messages I always, you know how we all have like our own mantras and we repeat things yeah, in our yeah, head yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I constantly say to myself is get to work. Yeah. Like what makes me less stressed about oh. how far I still have to go? Right. Just get to fucking work. Just get to work. That's get a step to work. in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. So and, and, and instead of like thinking about, oh my God, I still have a script to write and I've got all this stuff. Just get to then work. Then you need to do it. Yeah, just I've get to really, work. Exactly. Yeah, I've been really digging in lately this past year with the wedding planning on top of everything. It's like you have to like work some new it's like another Habits job out. right here. It, it's what? A wedding planning. It's like having another it's job like, right yeah, here. It's, it's one of the most job. stressful things, too, that, that like other than it. like probably moving or a, a death in the family. It's like mm-hmm. wedding planning is crazy. <laughs> I Cody, don't get it. anxiety, am I right? Yeah. 
I'm with you guys. Wedding planning sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. But Cody and Alex, do you guys do you, are, do you guys are like, oh, these people are dumb, or you agree? No, I agree. I have a really bad case of social anxiety anytime I'm anywhere where there's multiple people around. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I freeze up just like Roka. So I know what you guys are talking mm -hmm. about. It sucks. I've seen him sit at his desk and freeze. Yeah. Cody, <laughs> Cody unrelated to that, but related to socialness, uh, I have a question for you. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is great. N not live. Tee it up, Not Roxy. live. Not right now, but can I have your phone number? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> I finally have to do this. I, it's, she it's, asked so nicely. You can't you not yeah, give please, it to her. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's come up. It's come up a few times in the last couple of weeks, especially where like I have had something specific to send to Cody. Emailing so much fun. No, I just I want to text, man. I don't sure. have his number either. I only email Cody. I've, Brooke, I've texted you before. Nope. <laughs> yes, I have. It's not in We've the phone. We've had conversations. It's not in the phone. So you That's your fault it? then because he texted you. Yeah. I don't know what number it was. That was where the wedding invite was, John. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you liar. You liar. Oh, Snap. <laughs> that yeah. deserves all. You deserve all the, all the sound bites all for of yourself. The sound bites. It's like so interesting because how does anybody get anybody's number without doing what I just did? Like, how do I get your guys' numbers? We were probably talking about, like, text me right now about something important. Yeah, yeah but Cody I get and I have number? worked together for quite a long time now. Yeah, like, mm. yeah when was the first time we all know. shared numbers here? You've gone too I don't far. remember. I don't, I don't know. know. Everybody either. say your number right now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I really don't know. I don't six, know. 666. I know. I don't <laughs> know. I think Darina, we did a Comic-Con phone number exchange. Probably. Mark, I don't know. Roka... I don't know. I, I, I think it was. You uh, have it. I think it was Schmodown related. You have it. No, I, I have everyone's phone I have number. His apparently, email. Uh -huh. I don't have his number. Cody's lying through his. Alex, we something about movies. I was sending you a photo. Oh, um, that yeah. sounds about right. Usually, I ask for that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, before we go to break, Mark, I know that there's some Dirty Dozen news. Yeah. Sure. Talk sure to me, Goose. Sure is. So we got David Ayer is in talks to take a, to direct a remake of the Dirty Dozen. I know. Are you excited for this, my Massively friend? Massively excited. Okay. Um, not much else is known, but he is going to... He's That's attached more right excited. Now. That's more... <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Should we bring that in That's here? Do, do, do you want to leave, John, and then bring that? <laughs> do we have any Dirty Dozen fans? I'm just breathing. Bad. I'm going through my breathing right now. Uh, it's yes. not about me. It's not about me. Get to work. Mm -hmm. So That can be a Star Trek fan, too. <laughs> THR reporting. David Ayer will write and direct... A Dirty Dozen remake of Warner Brothers. Simon Kinberg, who wrote and produced uh, most of the X-Men franchise, is some also good, going bad. to be producer on this. Mm -hmm. So there you go. What do you think of – Ayer, I think, is perfect for a uh, for a Western David I love Ayer. this idea. Oh, because, yeah. because David Ayer did Fury, which is Fury. fantastic, and End of Watch. I know people want to hang Suicide Squad on him, but those other movies are incredible. I do not want to hang Suicide Squad. That's fair. That's fair. And I think Kimberg, Fury is amazing. Kimberg with the – yes, and Kimberg with the Apocalypse. Uh, but, but, but Kimberg also wrote Training Day. And also, and so, like, there's a lot of positive stuff on Ken, the other Kimberg's side. Kimberg's a hell of a producer. He's yes, been producing for producer. years. It's also the, really hard when you see a movie to know what, what exactly went wrong with it because – there's so many cooks. You yeah. can't totally. you can't pin it on one person. Especially ever. in a franchise. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, franchise movie. We don't. And we I'm don't know like how Suicide much Squad. of that was his fault. Yeah, Suicide it's... Squad. I think Warner Brothers really got involved with because remember the trailer came out and I, there's the behind the scenes out. they edited yeah, it out and yeah. I think Ayer has been online going, yeah, it wasn't uh, not really my film, but. but Beside yeah. the point. When Plus it's harder say, with the bigger studios. Plus, I want to say, I like that this kind of and I and I look. I, if I get shit for this, I'll get shit for this. But I like this idea of manly cinema is coming back. You know, a little bit more of the manly cinema. Uh -oh. There's a genre for it. Like, yeah, there it is. The Carnahan what do you Twitter mean? exploded. Yeah, no, it's like the Carnahan Wait, I, stuff. I, I what do you mean by manly? Because yeah, manly like to me. Like the old school manly. Like, you know no, because me, ma me manly is different than your manly. My manly sure. is like, you know, uh, homoeroticism in Hannibal. That's fair. So. Wait, well, right, I, but manly I mean, Dirty Dozen is, ma is what, a manly I actually am wondering what do you mean. Do you mean bro -y? Yeah, bro. I see, I don't different. call it bro. So what, do you, what does manly I mean? I call it manly. bro -y is like uh, old school or some shit. Like manly I'm talking about like. Like macho? Yeah, macho, macho but cinema. The, but that's more like give me five bit chauvinistic. Give too, me no? five manly well, movies. I'm not saying I anything negative about women is not chauvinistic. Wait, give me five like, manly movies. I literally want to know what you're talking sir, about. Dirty Dozen is pretty man Rambo uh, First Blood is pretty manly movie. Um, so like, talking like but primal man, man like, yeah, though. primal survival. Man. Like I Logan gotta... is a manly movie. But then what's Xena Warrior Princess? 
That's well, a yeah. that's a woman. That's a strong woman movie. So it's more of like a strong man thing. Right, you're right, and that's what I mean, manly. Because you can be manly like and not testosterone. Sure, of course. Yeah. So then, what are you saying? I'm John? saying man, uh, to me, to you, that's your manly. Right. To me, manly is testosterone driven. Okay. To you, it doesn't have to be. Right. So to like usually is. in a manly movie, there would be like fighting, physical fighting. Like Schwarzenegger, old school Schwarzenegger shit, old school Van Damme stuff, old school uh, Stallone stuff. Like I like that. Like Rambo Last Blood got a lot like of crap, Kickboxer. but that's a manly movie. Like you think Rocky's manly. No, I think Rocky is more. I think it is manly, but a different version of manly because Rocky's like it's about his love story. It's about the love story he has with her and with boxing. Mm. So yeah, so to me, it's more like this kind of like put your fist through a wall type, trying to save people type of thing. That's that manly stuff. So I like that. It's I like that. There's a genre for like Frank Grillo does a lot of that stuff. Joe Carnahan does a lot Frank of that Grillo. stuff. That's the manly stuff. Mm. I I don't think it's chauvinistic. I'm I'm not calling it chauvinistic. No, no, I was yeah. just wondering what I, you meant because like macho to me, that's what that means, right? right? Macho can be taken as a positive or a negative sure. connotation. Certainly in our culture, so, a yeah, culture. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'm not sure I fully get it, but I think I get what you're getting at. I don't know that that's what cinema needs right now, but I was mo- I think I was more excited about this movie prior to you saying that. Okay. <laughs> Are you talking about like these movies like The Expendables where you have all these, you know, yeah. action heroes, but that that's just not manly to me. It just means it's like a raw action movie and that's with fine. a lot of it's, dudes. It's just a different perspective. Like right. for me I think it is that. Like I don't think it Bridesmaids is like a else. womanly movie. Which one? Bridesmaids. Yeah. I just think you it's You would a call woman- it womanly? No, I just I would wo- not. It, no, I wouldn't. That's oh. my point. It's oh, just okay. a movie with a bunch of girls. Fair. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, what do you think, Riley? I don't know what to think about this conversation. To be honest hmm. with you, what I think you, you are cou- you thinking- are couching it in 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 a in a term that connects to you, and you no. guys are saying, "Whoa, what do you mean by that?" Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to suss out what you were saying as well. I think it's just you are you have classified this way back when when you started watching right. some of these right. movies, right? In a way that now you're saying again here. So I I mean. I think I think it's I think it's just the use of language. I think yeah. that that we all grow up with different vocabulary and yeah. like and words mean differently to like now it's got, it, now it, it people I think are afraid to say things like that because yeah, I because think that's you're, what's you're going kind on right of you're kind I don't of, want to be afraid of it. Right, no, but my point is I don't is, think you're afraid. I don't think you're afraid. My point oh, yeah. is people are afraid to use those words like they are, like like and in they general like be. masculine, feminine, mm, but I think it's right. because people uh like that aren't like, you know, like a like a stereotypical you know, gay man. Sure. Like, why wouldn't that person be manly? Is, yeah. Are they manly of because course. they're you know huge? It's a version so here, of manly. Here's what I here's what I think because I think you can say whatever you want, of and course. also sure. I know your soul and your spirit and your heart, so mm, yeah. nothing's gonna negatively affect me in that sense. But I I think that the reason I don't think you should be afraid to say how you feel, but the reason I don't agree with your assessment is because. I think we're on such a bi- in such a binary time. The funny thing is you're not going to get hate for this. I'm going to get hate for this because based on who our fan base is, I'm sure that they're all sitting there being like, it is manly, it's manly. You know what manly means. But to me, mm, I think there's gonna be nothing makes mm. some something somebody more or less manly right. than identifying as a man. That's right. what makes you a man. If you sure. but and it's, and it's just because it's also a, you're a different generation than Roka, right? It's like mm-hmm. I think it's just the way that we use that word is to like how we used it when we were kids. So so I, I and I agree with what you're saying. I, I completely agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. And also you're right that that language is changing and the way we see gender is changing, right? Like mm-hmm. now there's all this like gender fluidity stuff. So so it's it's interesting to think about how we looked at like women and men back in the day, and now right. that's not the case anymore. Anymore, right, and, so. I, and I'm creating. I create space within myself for all the definitions to exist, right. and appreciate all the versions of manly. Right. For me, this is an old school manly kind of thing, possibly, and I like that. Right. Is that what you a looked grittier. up to as a kid? Like, did you want to oh, be like yeah. those? Sure. That was always the Civil War. I was a sensitive kid that loved musicals and Shakespeare. And then on the other side, I loved the Rambo. Right. You know, I joined the military. Rah, rah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah so I've always that was always yeah. the Civil War. Yeah. You know what would hit me with your when you use manly, it made me think of when I was little trying to connect with my father and talk to him about a movie. Mm. He goes, manly, dad, it's manly because I wanted to connect with him on a on a very manly level. He's like, calling you old. Well, <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, you're old. Cody, Alex, any thoughts as you're young men? No? 
<laughs> <laughs> they don't care about being manly. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty secure with with my manliness. It's gonna yeah. be an interesting time to open up the phone lines. Yeah. But uh, we'll go to break, and when we come back, we're gonna take some calls. Uh, hopefully, you guys want to talk to us about Ride of Skywalker. No spoilers. If you call in and you say something crappy and you try to spoil it for people, I will seriously come to your home. I will find you, and I will sick John Roca's manly ass on you. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. You. Uh, but we will take some calls when we come back. <laughs> I called Roxy like four times and she didn't answer, by the way. John Roca. Hello? Oh. You, you get it, Roxy? I was calling you on the show, and now you now we're you're on the break right now. Yeah. All right, you have my number now. I saw three times during the show, and I was like, what the Witty. Uh, let's uh, take a day trip to Santa Barbara, me and you. Let's hit up some charming shops. Let's buy some antique. Let's develop some inside jokes. I want to know you, man. want to make you smile. want to be your sunshine. to Collider Live. I got to tell you guys something. Breaking news. <laughs> I officially have Cody Hall's Yay! phone number. Cody's Cody's long game is for a joke is, is incredible. Yo. He just called you and called you 
I these are it. so he good. could not he called me three times and he could not have made me more worried mm-hmm. when a number you don't have calls you three times don't you guys assume one of your friends is in prison I assume somebody's dead. It's not the first thought. It's not the first thought. Not prison, thought. mostly That's... dead is what I assume. Why would they be calling you yeah. if they're dead? No, 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 like somebody died. I think if somebody dies, calling... they don't call you that. It's not that urgent. <laughs> they're not going to keep calling. Like, we need you to know this person's dead. They'll, I don't know. You don't call back. When people have died, people, people in my family call me a lot. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, like, mm-hmm. constantly, like, pick up the phone. It's an emergency. And you're like, oh, somebody died? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, when my dad died, That's where my, my anxiety comes like from. 10 times in a row to wake me up. Really? It was like 4 a.m. So I called over and over until yeah. I woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, John, keep chewing into the microphone. I really appreciate it. You know what? Why don't you give me your phone number, you said so be. You have my phone number. I've <laughs> talked to you before. I don't have it on my phone. You want We've it? shared titles. 509. Episodes. How are these so kidding. good? What are Peanut butter? This I don't is know. The anxiety at... Uh, no, I got these at Costco, actually. These are at Costco. No. Which has no anxiety because it's big. Yeah. We already talked about we that. Have, we we opened up the new. phone lines today? Yeah, Cody, let's open them phones, please. Sorry, Cody. I moved my mm. mouth away from the mic. Yeah, I get it, though, because these are really good. It's almost worth sounding like shit over. Mm. Also, I do want to say shout-out to everybody who is in the uh, in the live watching place live right watching. now. Because there's no live chat. I was going to yeah. Sons chat. Again, we are not live chatting today because people are dicks about uh, Star Wars stuff. But we see you guys, so shout-out to all of you watching live. We appreciate you. Mm. And that's why we'll be taking calls, so that exactly. you guys can participate in the conversation. So many smart things we're saying today. <laughs> yeah. Every day I on the show. I I said this. I'm so fucking glad that the chat is turned off today, only for the reason that God, we're going after the men, we're going after the Jews, we're going after the Star Wars people. We're taking Mexican all the people. We're talking, about, we're talking about issues, there's anxiety. Some, there's you know? some Mexican that that's like, up. I don't like Morrissey. Shut up. <laughs> I own a house. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was a good one. That's <laughs> caller. You are on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's up, guys? Boy Dory. Oh. oh. Who's this? Well, who are you? Uh, this is Kevin from uh, Orange County. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Kevin. Happy to have What's you here. What do you got for us Dorian? today? We're in Orange County, Kevin. Okay. okay. Uh, Specifically, hello? what street and what is the number? <laughs> no, no, no. What town? What town? <laughs> Can we have your phone number? <laughs> uh, I'm from Costa Mesa. Nice. Okay. Cool. Good talk. Yeah, also, so- Kevin, uh, what are you calling about today? <laughs> I want to know if he's near Tustin. <laughs> Give me a break, I- Roxy. I do. I actually too. am. I'm like 10, 15 minutes away from Tustin, so I'm from your area. All um, right. Right on, man. Just representing. It's uh, just like not that cool because, guys, it's like 40 minutes from here. I don't know. Makuga talked about Pittsburgh a lot. Yeah, but that's 3,000 miles from here, dude. Yes, Orange County's not cool. From... Really. So, Kevin, uh, oh, you and I, man, because apparently Roxy hates Orange County. Yo, Kevin, I love you. Yeah, it's real. Mark that I struggle with. Whoa. What do you got? I love Mark, whoa, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Kevin, talk to us. Why are you causing shit, Kevin? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh sorry. I, sorry, I will never ask again. Where people are from. Are you happy now, Kevin? (laughs) You know how all our callers say they're nervous to call in? This is why. (laughs) Totally. Kevin, I love you. Keep going. Bring it, son. I'm not trying to bring on any more Eminem out of Roxy. (laughs) (laughs) Very Uh, good, sir. All right, Kevin, what what are you trying to do today? Talk to us. Uh, So a couple of things. Uh, I just wanted to say I really appreciate uh, what you guys are talking about with uh, anxiety today and with Riley and with Roka. Um, and, and Cody, I'm in the same boat with uh, social anxiety, uh, you know, freaking out with you know, whether it be masses of people around you or, you know, maybe the claustrophobia. Like, I love that we're shining a light on that. It's something that, especially, you know, me being Hispanic, uh, it's not really looked upon. Or mm-hmm. like it look, it's looked down upon mm-hmm. uh, when, you know, you speak to someone, oh, you know, I have anxiety or I feel uncomfortable. You're like, oh, well, you're not manly or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I appreciate you guys uh, voicing that. And it's it's good that we're finally, like, bringing that to light. Oh, thanks. Um, Kevin, thank you for that. Yeah. Amazing to hear. Yeah. Thank you, man. Also, oh, just to be sweet. fully clear, uh, I think Darina and I have just as much social anxiety as well, <laughs> just to throw our oh, names course, into the ring. Just well, and even he uh, said, and even Kevin men- mentioned that he's Hispanic, but we are raised that way. I don't know how you guys were raised, yeah. but we were raised to think that, like, you know, getting therapy and all these things are weaknesses mm-hmm. and all this bullshit. So, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. I said it not as a competition. I said it as a, I think that 100%, nobody should feel like they're the only person. It's literally all of us. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, thanks for saying that. Really appreciate it, man. Look, yeah. we can do things on and the internet that matter. Mm-hmm. Isn't that weird? Um, 
Uh, it's like on a lighter note from it, kind of to touch back on what during that. Well, you, you guys were talking about with uh, fan service in regards to Rise of Skywalker. With no spoilers. Who do you guys think will be the first person, or will be the person to say, "I have a bad feeling about this"? Oh, good call. To say, "I have, I a, have a bad feeling, feeling about, about this." this. Oh, okay, uh, let's talk about it. Thank you so much for the call, Kevin. We really appreciate it. Keep on rocking in Orange County. Uh, uh, what do you think? I, have, I hope it's Palpatine. Could <laughs> <laughs> <Did> you imagine? <laughs> I have a bad okay. feeling about this. <laughs> Good. Can't say I. I, don't think you have I a bad wouldn't feeling love about that. I mean, no. gonna do actual it. guesses. What actual guesses. I'm gonna say Ray. I see. Three PO's already said it, right? In the. Mm-hmm. In the because oh, I'm yes, trying to yeah. remember <laughs> who said it in Force Awakens. Because BB-8 said it in Last Jedi, right. but it was in Droid, which I loved. Uh, well, I, I, Finn I, and Poe have both said it, right? Right. I yeah, I thought post. What if it's Kylo? It? <laughs> no. Then I'll. It will be as fu- no, It'll be funny, it but not as funny as Palpatine. Mm, yeah. I think Palpatine. I have a bad feeling about this. But that's what we're talking about with fan service, too. Oh, I think Adam it needs. Driver in studio. Wow. Thank Adam, you. how are you doing today? Let's do a little deep fake. Adam Driver, Adam Driver in the studio. studio. Where is Adam Driver? Can How's you, it going, can Adam? You talk into the op- I yeah. should have been in Mission Impossible. Oh, wow. What happened there? Marriage Story is a good movie. What was it like working with Noah Bamba? He's a quiet guy like me. Yeah? You guys like party or anything? He didn't serve in the Marines, so I don't know manly he was. That's, oh. That's, what do you think about the word manly, Adam? <laughs> I think it's used incorrectly. Oh. That's a good You can be good manly. Good Adam Driver. No, it's not. No, don't tell me. No. Okay. How, how was your time at Juilliard? I hated it. <laughs> Hot take on Juilliard. What's your, fav- <laughs> what's what's your favorite you, Sunday, Adam? Pretentious people. Company. Mm. <laughs> Adam, do you like Star Wars? I hate it. <laughs> do you enjoy anything? Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> you enjoy Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> She's a great actress. I That's learned great. so much working with her. Yeah. Wow. In what movie? It's a Netflix movie. Oh. <laughs> it's called a Netflix movie? <laughs> Marriage Story, a Netflix Marriage movie. Story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Netflix is Marriage Story. Everybody, Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah. Coming in there. There's no way that was good. Yeah. There's no way that was good. But you're a good Bernie, though. To it. Your commitment that was, was good. great, dude. A plus for commitment, he man. He looked so tired last night. <laughs> I'm sure he did. It's over. When he was leaving. It's he's over. Yeah. Well, he actually got a lot of hate early on. If you guys, sure The first did. movie. Yeah. The first movie he did. He yes, did. he was. It was the emo whiny kid in the I, first movie. Yeah, but he did what he was that, supposed that was to the do. job. Yeah. You sure, know? sure, sure. Adam shouldn't have received it. The character that, yeah. deserved it, yes. I think they all received too. hate. Yeah. They, they, they did. Ask Rosemary Tramp. Rosemary, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, she for sure, and the two of them. Finn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Finn, yeah, Finn got it. Fuck. If you're in a Star Wars movie, Fuck you get it. money, but you get <laughs> trolled <laughs> like yeah. forever. Yeah. Star Wars movie, delete your social media accounts. Mm-hmm. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Cody, Alex, any guesses for I have a bad feeling about this? I'm going to go with Chewie. <laughs> I like it. I like that. Uh, I like that. Gary Russell character. Oh. Zora Bliss. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. She looked gorgeous last night. Yeah. She did. I always look. Uh, she always looks gorgeous. Do you guys understand that I just go? I always look gorgeous. You do. Is that though. what you said? Roxy? You do though. That's, is that what you are you like Self-love Stuart is a, Smalley and SNL and you look I mean, at yourself in the mirror every you're, morning you're and you're 30? like, I look gorgeous, I'm good enough, <laughs> no. I'm smart enough, no, I get never. lost, but I'm, I'm gorgeous. Oh god. Your therapy is working. So like fucking it. much no. Holy Self-love shit, no. Good. No, I almost ripped my hair out ten times today being like I, this makes me look brunette and bald and fucking fat in my face. <laughs> My ray hair. See, Literally, John, you have no all, fat on your face. But John, oh, we all think that though. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. have body dysmorphia. It's, it's all me in the mirror this morning. I was like, <laughs> doing yeah. like all different shit. I bet Cody uh, has fat days. Sure. I yeah. kind of don't. Do you, Cody? Yeah. yeah. Co- on, no. Uh, it's all perspective. This week, I tried to make Christian feel better. And I was like, anyone can do a double chin. I couldn't do a double chin. It, really, <laughs> oh, it really did oh the God. reverse effect of what he intended. Cody, of course it was. Yeah. You have you have the opposite of fat days, though. I'm sure you have days where you feel like to the other way, too yeah. skinny. Yeah, yeah everyone's like, oh, Cody, you're in such great shape. No, no, it's 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 a curse, guys. I'm telling you, Aww. I look like a child. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago, I went to a restaurant and they asked if I wanted a kids menu. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was lying. It was years ago. You've grown since then. We got a call, by the way. Great, let's take a call. You're on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, My name's Justin. I'm calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. Justin. So happy to have you here. What you got for us today? Well, I wanted to weigh in on this manly film discussion. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Oh, goody. (laughs) Well, I, I think I kind of understand where he's trying to come from. I think maybe it has less to do with testosterone films and more like 
male centric films that where the characters get by sort of by grit or less I would say less technologically advanced. I think in movies like Predator where it's a bunch of guys who are completely outmatched. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. In Predator, he has to understand about the heat imaging. That takes brains. That isn't just brawn. But I, oh, I, no, I agree. I'm just saying that I they're, appreciate they're getting your point. By, Attack the these strong men who really are completely outmatched. In any other film, they would be the people, the, the one that right. someone would be afraid of. That's fair. And in this case, they're getting by just barely on the skin of their teeth, even though they're these big hulking figures. So mm. let's see, Justin. That would be a movie I consider manly. Let's see if you're right, Justin. John, is Justin correct that that is what you meant by manly? Well... That sounds like a no to me. I don't need anyone to tell me. No, I'm just joking. I, I, I would say I think Justin's on the right track of what I'm trying to get at. Maybe I don't know. Maybe testosterone fueled is a better thing. But I also think testosterone is connected to man, exactly. so it can go either way. Well, how would you well, describe these films? Testosterone is not necessarily. Right. Yeah. That's, how how would you describe these films? Is a chem- like that is a thing. Not right. man is a concept. Fair enough. Um, how well, would I describe what films? Like that's why I was trying to get you to name some. Cause but I, then how would you describe like Mad Max Fury Road? With Fury Road? Yeah. That's not a manly film. Right. What is it? That is a, what's another word? What's the version of the, what's the female version of manly? But that's my point. That's what I'm trying to ask you to. Because there's also a badass movie for, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use a gender to describe a movie. Right. Okay. But when you call, okay. So let me ask you this. When you're calling Star Wars fans dicks, are you genderless when you're doing that? Or are you saying it's only men? It depends because you could say dick. I'm using a societal term of dick that means a dickhead, man or woman. Could be man or woman. I would be like, you're a dick, you're a dick, you're a dick. It's kind of like using the word. manly to to movies that uh, that appeal to oh, men yeah. as would well. Oh yeah, would you have an issue? Like, would you ever see, would you ever see a movie, manly movie? Roxy and Dorina? If what was called a, a like Fury if you Road. saw just yeah Fury whatever movie it may be. But that's be. what's confusing to Blunt. me because it is more like badass. Thank you, right? Justin, yeah. so much for calling. I, I agree with Roxy. It's like it's for okay. me. It's like why why adjust. is Atomic Blonde you like don't Atomic Blonde is womanly? Mm. I, I here's what I like to do, and despite popular belief, I like to be as clear with my descriptions as possible. So to me, I don't know what you're talking about when you say that. So that's why it doesn't resonate because okay. I I had to be like, wait, what is he speaking of? Because right. then you named some movies that you said no to that I would have thought were in the category of movie you're talking about. Mm. See. So I, it, it, She's just trying to understand yeah, what you mean yeah, by the not word a, more so. That, no that, but you have every right to speak how you Sure, yeah. sure, sure. No, yeah. but it might be a generation. You might be right. It might be a generational thing. I those think are the movies is. I grew up on at the cinema all the time. Right. Right? Those kinds of like type of movies, oh, right? Oh, you know what? You and so know, I miss those movies because you know we used to have them all the time. When I said people don't say like womanly movie, people I have heard people say a girly movie though. Right, like chick flicks. Like I also don't mm. get why a romantic comedy is considered a chick flick be because a ch- I know more dudes, uh, more, more, like my guy Matuga. friends. My, my guy friends broke up. Like, I love like, romantic, they, they love romantic comedy. The greatest. More than me. So I that's, love rom-coms. But that's supposed to be a chick flick and most of the people that yeah. I know that love them are dudes. Yeah, so yeah that's, we're just get, we're changing weird. our ways as society. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to hang on. I'm fluid. Yeah. I'm transitioning with you. I'm yeah. cool. Fluidity I'm is great, I'm cool. like Enchantress. I can hang. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take another call. Yeah, call her on Clyde Alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Fluidly Yo, speaking. Yo, G from Glendale again. Yo, G. Hey, I wo- G. G. I wore, I wore your Aerosmith shirt that you gave me to Soho House yes, with the did. two of you guys this week. Nice. And I fucking loved was, it. Yeah, and I wore it on my shirt. live stream. And I gave you a shout out there. I love that mother effing shirt. And nice. everybody else did too. And G, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I love I'm my Baffo Med shirt. Funny enough, I'm calling from Oregon. Well, he didn't care. I'm up in. Nice. Up north. I'm not home to. But yeah, rocks. I need to talk to you. All right, what's up? Rappers. Ha! <laughs> Eminem, <laughs> specifically? Break it down, G. Yes, specifically Eminem. Is the best rapper uh, alive? You, mm. Actually, well, see, when it comes to well rounded. <laughs> Drown him out! Cody, get him out! Favorite. Sorry, go ahead. But, but, when you talk is bar for bar, lyric for lyric, the greatest <laughs> living rapper of all time is Black Thought from the Roots. You're insane. Yeah. You're insane. I don't even know what and he if, said. If, if, you, if you hold up, he said "Blast Star from the Roots." Oh. If, you, if you if you don't believe me, listen to his 10 minute freestyle that he did on Funkmaster Flex like two years ago. I gotta tell you, it's and, not that I don't believe you; it's that I don't agree. Well, you gotta listen to it. Listen to it. <laughs> well, you didn't listen to it properly, is what Wait, he's saying, Rocky. You gotta listen to it. Hey. Nobody. Just bar for bar, <laughs> lyric for lyric. On Black Jimmy Thought Fallon is... show. No. You See, don't know. That's the thing. People, people, people. No. Think, at least in today, because they, but they, the Roots discography 
is classic. Before Bro, I, I was born in Philly. Yeah. I respect the Roots. Love you're, Roots is fantastic. True. Roots is great. Quest Love and all them motherfuckers. Yeah. But it's not Eminem. It, and and listen, I don't think that Kanye is still the conversation. Kanye is me. in conversation for Kendrick. sure. I love him. And I don't yeah, think that yeah, Eminem uh, is perfect yeah, when, when artistry and all that stuff, I'm thinking just strictly buffer. But if you start that, then KRS one is in the conversation. He's still a lot. I oh, I said that Machine Gun Kelly beat Eminem in I thought that Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly beat Eminem in their battle. I did. I did. <laughs> so I'm not saying that Eminem is wow. is the, the best in every single thing he does. Just in general, he is the best rapper alive. I can't sit next to mm. you. You thought that you thought Eminem beat Machine Gun. Eminem That's... smoked Machine Gun. I didn't think so. And Nick Cannon is a damn fool to be coming for Eminem. That's that is also <laughs> true. Though, that is true. I will say though, for sure, KRS is top five that are alive. Easy. Mm-hmm. G, thank you so much for calling in. Oh, we G, really appreciate that. it. Thank you, G. Well, you thanks, for the shirts. thanks for the shirts, baby. Uh, guys, love having rap battles on the show. <laughs> I was thinking about it today, though. I, this is all right. I already see the fucking black image with my face on it, with the dumb thoughts of the day that I do. But right. I'm gonna say oh, it deep anyway. Thoughts? Deep yeah, thoughts, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> AKA dumb Roxy thoughts. But I love those things. Me too. Here's <laughs> the deal that I was thinking about today. How crazy is it? That like these grown ass people rap battle like they like they're like I'm gonna beat you up with my words <laughs> like, it's like fucking everything or, or I like, love about that or like the you got served movies then the, there's dance battles dance those are, are great too so good like so grown great. ass people yeah. were like but then the problem with rap is there's actually and and hip hop there's actually a lot of violence going on as well but if there was none of the violence and it was just I'm gonna fight you with my lyrics mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. Or yeah. my skills. Somebody grew up being like, you know what I want to do? I want to fight other people with music. Mm-hmm. What? Like, so Take good. It. Yeah. But that's like, the heritage. It's that. like, yes, it's the right, best. Because uh, breakdance battles were the way it used to be back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I took did part you, in a did couple you of break dance? Did you break dance? Did you break dance? Of course. <gasps> sure. Videos Can anywhere. you do it on this table? Back then, yeah. Video no, or not at my age. But back then, like in, in Virginia, so in Northern Virginia, in Sta- I think it was Stafford or, yeah, we there was a club where you go 18, you could go if you were under 18, and you'd go, and you could, like, get with a crew and do the breakdance battle. Right. So that happened a couple of times. What does it mean, get with a crew? Do you have video? No, of course Damn not. It. And you would get with happen. a crew? Like, you, like you know, you'd be like, yo, you want to be in my dance crew? It's like a pickup game, basketball. Like, you show up and the guys are like, oh. John Roca dance battle. <laughs> There's no John Roca dance battle. Damn it. Click it. Whatever it is, click it. That's not me. That's a fashion designer. We don't know. We that's don't know. It's a Scottish that's fashion designer. Aww. You don't know that? I do know a that. Scottish <laughs> fashion designer named John Roke. And he's Asian. And he's even better. Great. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I like that you added that like it was going to change my mind. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's an interesting wrinkle in the whole situation. <laughs> yeah. But, what but, a but, twist. But that's why it's good. That's why <laughs> hip hop and rap and all that was positive because it was like you go at each other. On the streets, and then when it's over, there's a clear winner. Yeah, it's, and it takes the place of violence. It's, it's so a positive. Dope. Yeah. It's just so That's great how that we should settle stuff instead of having a war. Yeah. Dude, everything Why don't we do should that? end in a rap battle. Yes. Like this is or what dance I try. Battle. Or yes. a dance battle. I try to do it on the show all the time when I'm like just feeling whatever, and I just try to make you guys rhyme with me. It's all yeah. I want. Yeah, and then you came up with the song that people actually like, which rarely happens. Yes. So good job. My, everybody likes my songs. D- I, do uh, we? My Should we start yeah, a poll? Yeah, call her on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you rapping from? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Ingrid from Dallas. Ingrid from hey, Dallas. Hey, so Ingrid. Hell to the freaking yeah. What do you got for us today? Uh, first of all, yeah, I'm with Darina. We should do dance battles for everything. No more yes. conflict in any side ever again. Yeah, Darina. Dance like battles. Yeah. 15 times. Okay. Oh. I don't want to talk about Star Wars because I'm stressed about it. So I wanted to ask you guys, <laughs> what's a non-Christmas movie that you guys have to watch every Christmas season? Ingrid, oh. Ingrid with the fire dope question. Oh, great question. Love that because I don't know, think we want to talk about Star Wars anymore. Yep. Nope. I don't, nope. No, I don't. Let's get, talk get, about we Christmas, just watch non-Christmas it. movies that you got to watch during the holiday season. I say holiday because I see you Jews. I see you. Oh my God. <laughs> with your money. <laughs> with all of your money <laughs> and your noses, which are hard to miss. Woo! 
Please scroll people. back to the show so you know what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> Please rewind a little That's bit. That's going to get clipped out on Twitter and stuff. Yeah. Um, no! Yep. Our producer. Are we all fired, Mark? Are you firing us? No, I'm trying to think of a movie that I want to watch. I thought it was like, how I get out of this? I was literally not pay, paying attention to you guys because it's a great question, and I'm like, I have no idea. So uh, I, I watch um, Wizard of Oz every Christmas. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, I love watching Wizard of Oz. My mom watched it every Christmas, so I, I keep that alive. And it, it's I guess it's not a Christmas movie in any way other than the fact that it feels feels like a Christmas movie because it's got right. the same concept of holiday time, like family and yeah. love and no place like home. Mm-hmm. Um, is that your favorite movie? It, it's in my it's in my top five for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, my favorite movie is Good Will Hunting, but it's definitely yeah. – I could watch Wizard of Oz anytime. There's no rapping Any day. That's like me with Return um, to Us. Have you seen the outtakes? <laughs> Judy Garland gets down. Oh, she, Tin Man drops a mad beat. Rain drops on roses. Can, we, can, Ryan have kids. When you live stream tonight, can you rap your Star Wars reaction, <laughs> please? Yes. And then you'll get yes, so many live viewers. I will do Cowardly that. Cowardly lion in the hood. In the hood. Yo, and people cats. want them brains and that heart. If I was the king of the castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So oh, John Mark, what are your it's movies like what, you're talking about? What qualifies as rap? Because I don't think what we just did does. <sighs> no. All right. So, so far away from rap. rap. <laughs> what about you guys? What movies can we answer for Ingrid? Uh, was that her name? Ingrid, yeah. For yes. me, it's uh, my dad and I always every Christmas before he passed, we used to watch the Godfather movies one and two, and then end with Scarface. That was that was our Christmas Day tradition. It kind oh, of nice. feels like Christmassy movies to me too. I don't know something about it. Godfather. I, not nothing about Certainly them except for the face. fact that I feel like a lot of people do that around yeah, Christmas, that's the holiday fair. time. Yeah, that makes sense. We we'll watch that. Mark, I can't. I can't find one in my head because I'm such a Christmas movie junkie. When I, right. I only want Star Wars. Star, but see, I didn't want to go Star Wars because we don't want to. We didn't want to talk about it. But, talk about it, but I, I tend it? to put yeah. on a Star Wars movie around okay. the holidays. It's not yeah, a Christmas movie that counts. Yeah, so okay. I guess Star Wars. Um, I mean, I count these as. Christmas movies because my favorite are Batman Returns and Gremlins, but they're mm. not really about Christmas. But I watch those every year. Yeah, literally every year. But I don't think they're really Christmassy. I guess I also watch Gremlins 2001 is. once a year. That's not a Christmas movie. No, it's a great movie. That though. is a great Good movie. Good one, yeah. Cody. Any? I think I got nothing, guys. Yeah, it's like I, I like the December's time of the year for Star Wars coming out. I think it's a lot of fun. But uh, I got nothing. Alex. Uh, Cornetto trilogy. For yes. Mm-hmm. Good choice. But do you guys do this too? I catch up on like all the Oscar kind of buzz movies. Oh, that's true. I do that, and I I use really Christmas. This Alex. <laughs> I use Christmas time. Don't mind us. <laughs> to majorly Alex, binge. You're the fucking man. TV oh, shows boy. that I missed. That makes sense. Manly. There are TV shows you miss. There. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. So many to catch up on this <sighs> this December. Finally caught up on five hundred this year. Yeah. Cause you watch like nine. I know. I, know. I gotta watch Succession. I, I gotta oh, watch succession. Leftovers. So much. Yeah, to watch. you do. I, I want to watch things. Leftovers. That's one that I want to put in there. Unreal. Do you, do you watch any Mexican? It's, do you watch any Mexican movies or Latino movies during Christmas? Like or actual shows? movies? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, like, like I've been watching. Like or anything like that? Not, I used to more with my grandma. Okay. Tell when, me what Before you she said. passed, Cantinflas, he's a famous uh, Mexican comedian. He's essentially the Jerry the Lewis of oh. Mexico. Yeah, and uh, like Jorge Negrete, like yeah. all of those like old school, like uh, La India Maria, like right. that type of stuff. Like we used to watch it more when we were younger. Romeo and Juliet, Julieta, those, that's a great one. Yeah, so, or like uh, El Santo Contra las Momias, yeah, like right, that type of stuff. right. Uh, sorry, Roxy, Mark, Cody. My mommy's no, that's okay. I, I I was asking because I genuinely would like to know. Yeah, it's just basically our like Mexican icons. They were all in Coco, which was pretty cool. That yes, cool. yeah. So like like in Coco when they're all at the party and Frida Kahlo shows up, like they have all of these like Mexican icons that everybody that grew up in our culture was like, oh shit, like yeah. that was pretty cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah. I've, Great movie. I'm so white sometimes. I didn't even know that about Coco, and I love the mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. Now I Same. do know. Yeah. Let's take one more call before we close yeah. out the show. Neither Caller, Riley, you are on Collider Live. Right. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Neither did Riley because he couldn't answer that question right. Shut the hell up. <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's uh, Darina's favorite creep. Saul in the Saul? house. Oh, Saul? Saul, I, Saul on Star Wars Day. I told oh I told Darina not to say that about you anymore, Saul. After you. What did I say about him? We, we, you don't you say it again. You called me creep like four times. Oh, that's all. Here's the thing. I, I told, don't think you're a creep. I told Arena not to do that anymore, and then and then you called and said it about yourself. But yes. like we had dropped it, <laughs> right? Like it was hot. Well, yeah. how do I? Well, I don't. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I was just making a joke. <laughs> uh, um, it was fun. But let me. Um. Okay, I'm gonna try to help my boy Roque here out a little bit. I don't. Um, John, when you're talking about like a manly film. You're talking about films 
correct me if I'm wrong, films that portray and express masculine ideals and attributes in contrast to, um, you know, uh, abuses of those attributes, like, like stick to and sort of assertion. Right, but you you're still using mainly? the term masculine, which can be uh, used for many different things, and it still would imply an idea that this is masculine and that isn't. Right. Right? So it's still yeah, inherently yeah. in the definition of an issue. we got to figure this out. Right. So... Well, no, ma- masculine doesn't necessarily mean male either. Like mm-hmm. that's there's, there's female, there's masculine and females, and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing right or wrong about. But what is a masculine or feminine attribute, though? Uh, traditionally, and this is a generalization, because uh, for thousands since we had Western civilization, we've had ideals about masculinity. The Romans had a god of masculinity, so like it's it's always been in our society. So so it it does shift from generation to generation, even mm-hmm. sometimes. But sort of like um, assertiveness with with regard to consequence. That's pot, that's that's a masculine trait. And usually in films that are considered like manly, the villain is always overtly masculine and abuses a power or takes advantage. And that's usually what the hero is usually embodies the positive sides of that. So I think that the that what you started with though that this is a generalization. I think that's the point is that mm-hmm. it is such a generalization today. But my I, my question for you is unrelated to this. My question for you is you you haven't called in in quite some time. Why <laughs> why today? Because uh, I you know I wanted to help Roka. Hmm. But so, but, so but you have, have you been watching every day? Saul, so you've been trying. You've tried to call in before, but haven't gotten through. No, that's not true. We get we pick up his call uh, anytime he calls. It's true. At least that's what you told what, me. Uh, what, what is this one on one with Saul? I mean, who, like, you're the one that called. We're just asking you I questions. Just, I'm happy you called, Saul. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. I'm just happy call. you called, and yeah. I didn't know that you'd been listening to the show anymore. Yeah. What? 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 what who, who said that? <laughs> Roxy? <laughs> we were. At- <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, Bye, Saul. Saul. Thank you, Saul. Thanks, Saul. Thanks for calling in. The most <laughs> evil one, Darina, Mark Riley, John Roca, Cody Hall, Alex Marzonia, Roxy Stryer. See you guys tomorrow morning for Collider Live. I want to make you smile. I want to be your sunshine. <laughs> 